from Austin, Texas, formerly in the Republic of the United States, now under FEMA control, I am your host, Alex Jones. We live in epic times. We have a big broadcast lined up for you today. Wayne Madsen, investigative journalist for InfoWars.com, will be joining us to talk about campaign 2016 and the entire waterfront of developments. David Knight will be anchoring the fourth hour today. InfoWars Nightly News coming up. 7 o'clock, Central. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this article. Obama pushes for Zika funding. Quote, mosquitoes don't go through customs. No, the Zika mosquitoes come from the Rockefeller Foundation on record and are weaponized. And we've had top bioweapons experts like Dr. Francis Boyle on to detail it. But it gets worse than that. You know, most of the so-called refugees, they don't get vetted either. They don't even get their IDs or passports checked. That's confirmed. And they won't tell state police or even the FBI who they are. And the FBI even bucks the Obama administration and comes out and says, none of these people are vetted. Actually, they are vetted. 99.9%, .9 I have an article today, of them are Sunni Wahhabists. Almost all of them are invaders. Or they were cohorts in the attempted takeover of Syria and the mass murder of all Christians and Shiites. And they have had their butts kicked right out of there. Saudi Arabia won't take them back. That's where most of them come from. They're Chechens, you name it. And they're going right through Turkey into Europe. And boy, I've got a stack on of news that when we come back in the next segment, start your engines. Strap yourselves in with a four-point harness and get ready. Because we're taking over 1,000 horsepower of liberty all the way to the edge today. Just the stack of treason is overwhelmingly powerful. The image this puts, just this stack of news together, shows you clearly what's going on. And there's just so much more. Huge Trump news. He is dominating Hillary in every poll, as we said he would do. Within three weeks, he was beating her in national polls. Another week has now passed. We're four weeks into him taking the gloves off. And Hillary is now behind by up to four to six points in many national polls, two points in others. I mean, Trump is just turbocharging past her right now. And the more he takes the gloves off, the weaker she gets. Now, the more he hangs out with Henry Kissinger and James Baker and everybody else, the worse things get. And I understand that he's just hat tipping to them so they don't come after him. But at the same time, he just better continue with his pro-gun rhetoric. You better continue hammering the political correct garbage because that's worth it right there. Just having a national spokesperson will bring up the rape and stuff like that. So it's kind of like he gets a demerit, a little demerit for some of this stuff with the establishment. But then he gets giant gold stars that are 50 times bigger than, than the demerits with the saying, you know, Bill Clinton's a rapist and stuff on Fox News. <laughs> Believe me, the establishment doesn't like that. Uh, so... Uh, I got some issues with Trump, but for everything he does, and there's so much other good stuff that uh, I'm watching very, very closely. But my gut tells me things are still on a good course here. In fact, more than ever, we're going to cover all that when we come back from break. I really harped on Glenn Beck a lot yesterday because you know, he's hanging out with Zuckerberg and then comes out and badmouths conservatives and said, Zuckerberg's not censoring. Zuckerberg's employees have gone public. They're engaged in Chinese-style censorship. And this is outrageous. And he wants to be the one left alone. He wants a controlled market like John D. Rockefeller because competition's a sin. Because Doughboy, I don't mean he's fat. He just has that, that inherent sliminess. Like a snake coming up to you to bite you, a cobra or something. And I, I, just, I'm just, I, just, I just can't stand him. I'll just admit it. And by the way, no one else likes him in the liberty movement or conservatives or libertarians or patriots. I remember back when he was like still a big star five, six years ago. I talked to prom people and they go, Lynn Beck, he's a crazy egomaniac who thinks he's God and literally is the most pretentious jerk to waiters and everybody else you've ever seen. I mean, he is, he's just like Hillary Clinton. The guy is a freaking Judas goat, egomaniac, Benedict Arnold. Let me do this again. Let me just give you some of the headlines and I'm going to drill back into it. 40 volcanoes are erupting right now as the crust of the Earth becomes increasingly unstable. Infowars.com, Michael Snyder. RT, apocalyptic scenes in Indonesia as deadly volcano erupts, spewing hot ash, killing seven. 
London Telegraph, Elijah Wood, Hollywood in the grip of child abuse scandal, similar to Jimmy Savelle, the Satanist, who reportedly tortured small girls to death in the presence of the elite of Britain. They have found bodies, they have found the torture chambers, and of course they've been having governor, government ministers and others that were connected to it dropping dead. And even uh, mainstream news there says that there is a pedophile cult, in their words, running the UK. It's running the world, ladies and gentlemen. It's running the world. Continuing here, Trump to Hillary disarmed your bodyguards. Exclusive Donald J. Trump, Hillary Clinton's plans for more illegal immigration to America are a disaster for our country. Former White House reporter, media happy to be managed by Obama. Former top writer at the USA Today publication told the Wall Street Journal. Continuing, new poll shows Trump beating Clinton in general election accelerating as he gets more hardcore. Bernie Sanders is digging in because he really is the leader. And now he's fighting to not let Hillary steal the delegates and super delegates. So the mainstream media is now basically calling him a terrorist, violent, evil, because he's not the person they want. They want Hillary. Sanders would be so polarizing, he wouldn't get most of what he wanted done. And that's why they don't want him in there. I mean, just like they don't want Trump, they're trying to steal it. But he had such a landslide, and people didn't buy that, no, popular vote does count. We're not going along with your mind game, so they failed. But the Democratic Party has been so servile that they've gotten away with some of it, but now they're starting to wake up. So good job to them. I mean, we do have popular voting here, right? Yes, you can have a contested election when it's neck and neck, but not when it's a landslide. Not when he wins New Hampshire, he wins seven other states, they give it to Hillary. No, that's wrong. And if you say that's the system, then let's change it, even though that's not the system. You don't have the moral high ground, Hillary Clinton or Ted Cruz. And I don't take pleasure coming out against Ted Cruz, folks, but when you start shooting your mouth off and talk about landslide victories when you're stealing states, that dog doesn't hunt. Now, before I go any further into that political news, let me just go ahead and get into this stack and read you these headlines. And then I'm going to come back from break and drill into these more. But just listen to these of your radio listener, TV viewers. We're going to aim the document cam down there. I'm going to go over these articles. And just listen to these headlines. I'm going to come back and drill into these. But how these tie together. Guardian newspaper. Revolution in America when dying white majority is overthrown. Why is that so important? See, it makes everything about the race or group you are, not about everybody's freedom. All of our basic freedoms are being demolished. But then we're taught it doesn't matter because we're based on race. But every other group is supposed to be based on race. But white people. And then we're taught to hate ourselves. I mean, it is just total race-based politics like the Klan had during some periods in the South, but globally managed by the corporate elite for divide and conquer. And I know you know that, but this is what we're really seeing. There's an admitted CIA program with Sumner Redstone and Viacom, the biggest media company in the world, to break up the family. That's been declassified. And you turn it on, it's totally weaponized to break down society. They're announcing, look at this, immigration officials to start sending transgender women to middle of Texas where they built an entire facility. An entire facility just for them. Again, as if this is the biggest issue in the world when you've got like 0.2% of people saying they're transgender. It, it's just... You want to see what causes confusion, a breakdown. That's what it is. Forget the transgenders. Forget whether a man can be a woman or vice versa. Forget all the science. Either way. Are we planet training? This was formulated by psych warfare chiefs to screw the species up. I'm sorry. Let me read the headlines. I'm sorry. Guardian Revolution America when dying white majority is overthrown. And you read this. It's the most racist Garbage. It sounds like a Nazi wrote it. Hungry Prime Minister. Clinton is George Soros's puppet, wants to 
overrun EU with millions of Muslims, while the mouth is Clinton, the voice is that of George Soros. Poland's top ministers have come out and said, we are under Soros attack. Even nationalists that are right wing are saying they're trying to put Nazis in charge. That's in the news today. In fact, it was declassified. I'm going to get to that. They're trying to put Nazis in. And the nationalist groups that are against it, they call them Nazis. Like the, the, the libertarian presidential candidate calling Trump a Nazi, saying he wants to like go after Anne Frank. This is so incredible, folks, that they're doing this. But Europe gets it. They're like, stop it. Because Soros is in newspapers bragging. Yeah, I'm going to overthrow your country. Uh -huh. They're like, America, arrest him. Stop it. It's right-wing leaders, it's nationalist leaders, it's pro-Russia leaders, it's French leaders that are even liberal, German leaders that are liberal, are starting to go, yeah, this is crazy. The, the, the mayor of London, super liberal, sounds like Donald Trump now, because it's true. And there are a lot of liberals out there that don't want to suicide their countries. Hungary's Prime Minister Clinton is George Soros' puppet, wants to overthrow EU with millions of Muslims, while the mouth is Clinton's, the voice is out of George Soros. Hungary's Prime Minister Viktor Orban slammed Bill Clinton as a puppet of billionaire George Soros for supporting his plan to flood the EU with millions of hostile Muslims. We're going to get to that coming up. This is amazing. Now, 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 this is the key. We're going to roll some, roll some B-roll of this here for you if you're a TV viewer. If you're a radio listener, you can always go to infowars.com forward slash show with the free video feeds so you can actually see this for yourself because it adds a dimension. This is AFP. Last article is Breitbart. Pope and top imam embrace an historic Vatican meeting. This is the main imam of Cairo. Basically the Muslim Brotherhood. Al-Qaeda light. Absolutely incredible. Now let's move on to this one. That's from last week. Pope Francis likens Jesus to ISIS, says Muslims must breed with Europeans, says he, quote, doesn't want to hear about Christian roots of Europe, well, you know the quotes. He, quote, dreaded, excuse me, it's worse than what I remembered. He dreaded, this is a quote, Christian roots of Europe because it has colonialist overtones. It goes on and on and on. Now, let's move on to the article today. Islamic State, AP, the last article was LaCroix, major Catholic paper, the Catholic paper of France, in case you think they misquoted him. This is out of his mouth, ex cathedra or cathedra, AP. Islamic State group leaders urges attacks in Europe and U.S., and he's meeting with the Al-Qaeda light imam. And Merkel and Europe has said, come in, come in, come in, come in. Then they attack, they declare civil emergency, and arrest nationalists like Marie Le Pen, who's like Donald Trump light. She hasn't even endorsed Donald Trump because he might be too right-wing. I mean... Give me a, they're arresting people that are not as hardcore as Sarah Palin in France, okay? The tyranny's here, folks. Chinese-style net censorship is now official at Facebook, and Glenn Beck's endorsed it. Endorsed it. They're moving on us, like Drudge said here a year ago. Well, that Paul Revere stood right over there in the shadows. One of the first interviews he's done in years and warns you. Islamic State group... Leader urges attacks in Europe. Let me just race through these now. Bombings in Assad stronghold kills 111 in Syria. Islamic State claims responsibility. UPI. Credible threat that ISIS will target the Rio Olympics. Yeah, they're crawling all over South America. Brazil, anti-terror chief says numerous measures are being taken to prevent an attack. Yeah, training to live in a police state after they bring them in. Libertarian candidate compares Trump's proposal to deport illegals to the Holocaust. They deport you in Mexico. Germans, look how pathetic this is, rushing to buy blank guns, toy guns. Guns that are used to start, you know, swimming matches and races to try to just scare uh, the rapist away. But, oh, it gets better. 22% of resettled refugees in Minnesota test positive for tuberculosis. And then I knew it, but it's in the next article. The government knows they've got it and brings them in. <gasps> Remember Ellis Island? They kept you there to make sure you didn't have stuff like that? They bring people in and stick them in your kid's elementary school or high school or whatever. And your kid gets TB and they admit it. Wow, 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 wow.
Somali refugees and stuff that live in dirt huts, folks, and don't know what planet they're on. The women are total slaves. Uh, Saudi Arabian, you name it. They're just pouring in. I mean, it's amazing, the political correctness. And now when they chain their wives up, we're going to burn them up or kill them or harass them. The cops hardly even investigate. It's like, well, that's their culture. Mm hmm UN diplomats keep slaves in New York City. Don't get in trouble. Look it up. 20% of resettled refugees in Minnesota have tuberculosis. And then look at this. Indiana officials, 85 test positive for TB bacteria. Oh, and they wonder why it's suddenly exploding all over. Four refugees with infectious tuberculosis sent to Indiana. This is where they admit they sent people there that, that they knew had it. Now, let's continue. It's a lot more than that. Record 499 Syrian refugees admitted to U.S. Folks, it's thousands in Austin. So that's, number one, that's a lie, but listen to this. Record 499 Syrian refugees admitted to U.S. so far in May. No Christians. Syria's 20% Christians. They're the real refugees. Obama will not let them in. Wayne Madsen, investigative journalist, is going to be joining us to cover the waterfront. The full spectrum of news and take your phone calls. His latest article is up on Infowars.com. CIA links top Hillary donor Soros to terrorist bombing. Soros is a major contributor to Hillary Clinton's campaign. I mean, we've got the Polish deputy minister. Uh, we've got, you know, the president. We've got the, the president of Hungary. We've got German leaders uh, in their Bundestag. Uh, we've got just incredible news here and, and, and documents being released. There's multiple declassifications on Soros right now. It's just incredible. It's incredible how evil this guy is. He even tried to crash the British pound. So in the new James Bond movie, the Quantum Group is the private corporation behind Spectre. And there's a George Soros character that just wants to ruin the world and be mean because he hates people. This is the real head of Spectre. Just give me a break, man. Some weird Nazi collaborator who actually has cats and an oxygen tank? Yes, we will kill James Bond. Uh, I mean, you cannot make it up. Give me a break. And I said this before, it's just weird. Both my grandfathers are dead now. They were both in World War II in the Army Air Corps. They barely, both of them barely survived. One of them in a crash landing, the other you know, plane shot up. And then their base got bombed, my dad's dad, and he got hurt, Purple Heart. So it wasn't, didn't go up, and then a few missions in, the, his whole crew got killed. Barely didn't make it, fighting the Nazis. And then I've got to sit here, and you've got to sit there with a guy who was all the way back in World War II, a top Nazi collaborator, helping round people up. We have to put up with his crap. And then the Southern Poverty Law Center and ADL give him awards as a Jewish leader when he is the greatest living Nazi war criminal. And then he runs Media Matters and, and all these other groups attacking us. You people that work at those places, you are just horrible people. Because you're not just calling me a Nazi, you work for one who's anti-free speech and is putting Nazis in in places like Ukraine. I mean, how freakish is that? I just can't believe it. I, it's just, it's so rich. It's just such horse manure. I've had Media Matters call me before years ago just for fun. I'd actually do the interview with their so-called, you know, editor. They go, and you're not anti-Semitic? And I'm like, no, not like George Soros that funds you. He doesn't fund us. I pulled up election commission documents while I was talking to him and said he was their number one funder. And they went, <laughs> well, thanks for the interview. <laughs> and I said, all you were doing this for was to act like you were actually a journalist. You're not a journalist. You're a hack. Our government's funding Sunni radical Muslims that have killed 300,000 people conservatively in Syria, most of them Christians, and Obama won't let one out. We had the clip six months ago. We ought to try to find it again. It's something like Obama talks about it's not fair to only let in Christian refugees. And then he giggles and he goes, because that's not fair. Because that's not fair.
the numbers come in every month of the thousands and thousands and thousands. And they'll say, oh, we let one Christian in or no Christians in this latest group. I just covered the article earlier. They will not let them out because Turkey doesn't let the Christians out. They're to be murdered there. They're damned up in that country to be killed. And that's why the globals are so stupid. That's why, well, they're lust to kill. That's why they can't beat the Syrians, the coalition of Alawites, Christians, Shiites, and others with the Russians, because they have nowhere to go, folks. They have to fight to the death. And they're meant to be there and be murdered while the popey sits up there, the false pope, and, and meets with the leader of the Muslim Brotherhood and embraces him and shoots his mouth off about the, you know, I don't want to hear about Christianity and Christian stuff. You know, Jesus was just like ISIS. He sent people out to the world. These are quotes to literally betray Christendom. I mean, you, you just cannot make it up. They overthrew the Catholic Church. You can debate it was corrupt before, whatever. You can stick a knife in it. It's done now. They overthrew it with the pedophile infiltration, and as soon as they put this guy in, the media shut that down, and that was over. Because it was mission completed, they took it over. I can tell you right now, Pope Francis is a deep member. He might even be the head of it, this whole thing. That guy is the devil incarnate. And I know it's dangerous to stand up against somebody like him, but that's what I gotta do. The truth's the truth. It's just unbelievable to see the actual manifestation of Satan in the Vatican. All right, let's get into the news here. I started going through the stack, but I must go through it without commentary. Even if I fail, I must go back through it just so you can make your own decision off the headline. CIA links top Hillary donor George Soros to terrorist bombing. Hmm. Guardian, revolution in white America because of dying white majority will be overthrown. Hungary's PM, Clinton, is George Soros' puppet, wants to overthrow EU with millions of Muslims. Pope and top imam embrace an historic Vatican meeting. Pope Francis likens Jesus to ISIS, says Muslims must breed with Europeans. Islamic State group leaders urge attacks in Europe and the U.S. That's the AP, UPI. Bombings in Assad strongholds kills 101 in Syria. Islamic State claims responsibility. That's our government backs. Credible threat. The ISIS will target the Rio Olympics. Daily Mail. Libertarian candidate compares Trump's proposal to deport illegals to the Holocaust. Germans rushing to buy blank guns over migrant fears. 22% of resettled refugees in Minnesota test positive for tuberculosis. And it goes on to admit they test them and just let them in. <laughs> Four refugees with infectious tuberculosis sent to Indiana in 2015. I'm telling you, the leftists will take their kids and ask the, these people to cough in their face and go, we're sharing the TV with them. It's liberal. Oh, look, Habib next door chains his wife up and pours acid on her face. But did you see the other neighbor? He was wearing a cowboy hat like John Wayne. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Record 400, and this is CNS News. Record 499 Syrian refugees admitted to the U.S. so far in May includes no Christians. 20% of Syria is Christian. It was a little higher than that, but they've killed a couple hundred thousand of them. Are we going to let you out? I'm afraid not. <laughs> That's one Bob that really relished in that video. we got to find that. Something like, you know, Obama says we got to let all refugees in, not just Christians. Try to find it. He's just like, he laughs. He goes, this is not fair. To not, you know, only let Christians in. Because he's not, but the joke is, they're not letting Christians in. And he laughs, oh man, when they line those families up and machine gun them or chop their heads off or take those little girls as young as five into sex slavery and a hundred jihadis line up and rape them till they die. Look it up. ISIS rapes little girls till they die. And that demon filth, that filth of hell laughs about it. Because they're devil worshipers, folks. That is a sacrifice going on over there. You understand? They're not, they're not following the same conductor as us, okay? Wow. Obama planned to reintegrate ex-convicts into society 
raises crime fears. Oh, think so? The government's going to hire the hardcore felons. There is too many innocent people getting felony charges out there. So then everybody goes, yeah, we got to reform this. We can't even find workers. A third of the country's got felonies. That's not what this is. This is always the end stage of a communist operation. Elderly bookend of life talks. Once labeled death panels, AP. Oh, we are going to cut your care off and everything, but it's okay because we brought people in with TB to cough on you. It's all right. But don't worry, we care about animals, but not humans. Puppy addicted to heroin and meth found in motel room. And it is very sad, but see, we, we've been taught to have empathy for the dog, but not for all the chimera human animal experiments. Those creatures don't have any rights. Those are just in the newspaper. They've got them. They don't show it to us. When they finally roll it all out, I think soon, they're going to just say, well, we've been doing it for 30 years. <laughs> Our shampoo has a little bunny thing on it. You know, nobody had anything. No bunnies got hurt. No chimeras did, though. And your kids did with the vaccines and the fluoride. Bye-bye, brain cells. So there's that little stack. Oh, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Only seven other stacks. And I intend to try to at least skim over all of it today. But I want to go back into some of this stack first. But if you want to know who quarterbacks the show, There's something real wimpy and very, I don't want to say effeminate because it's not fair to women. A real woman is powerful and, you, you know, to call these weird Nelly men that are into kids effeminate and the, quote, feminization of men, this is not a feminization of men. This is a dehumanization of men and women. And there is this, this Renfield, Dracula servant archetype And I understand Media Matters and Raw Story and CNN will say that I'm saying vampires are real. It's an allegory, a parallel. You know that, too. You just try to deceive your viewers to make them you know, think I'm a liar. But all that happens is they come into it and find out what I'm really saying. I'm not saying vampires are real. I'm saying as an archetype or as a historical symbol, there have always been psychopaths that want to grab your kid and torture him to death. That's why the ancient Greeks had vampire hunting days, you know, where they'd go into the catacombs you know, during the day. The Romans would as well and find the crazy people. That would creep out at night and grab you and take you and eat you, and then, then they would hunt them down. It was always a very small percentage of people that wanted to lurk around the dark and, you know, grab your kids out of their bed at night and take them down to the catacombs and torture them to death. You know, it's just the whole thing of don't get close too close to the castle, kids. And the best way to scare your kids is go, they got long teeth, they drink your blood. They do drink your blood, they just don't got long teeth. And 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 it's an archetype in every culture. And when they take over, they build big pyramids, and then they have down below them the market where they hang the people by their legs, and then, and then the priest class sells the meat to fund themselves. From Chile to Central Texas, from the Karankawa to the entire Mayan kingdom, thousands of years of vampiric activity. And every other culture got into this as well. So find out what's going on here. We're dealing with vampires, ladies and gentlemen, psychopaths. And they've got a flavor. They, li they like certain things. Now I'm going to explain to you. The, uh, the, 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 the Nelly dehumanized men that people call feminized, those are the Renfield level. They just want to have sex with kids. Okay? But they are the gatekeepers and the toadies. And the, and, and the minions, the bots of the really evil people behind them. And you have to understand that if we're going to defeat these people, you've got to come to grips with it and understand that that's, that that's what you're seeing. You're not seeing the heart of the conspiracy when I say it's a pedophile cult. They don't put the vampires out in the open. They're back at the castles. They're back at the lairs. And the politicians go out and their minions go out and they corrupt themselves with the sex with the children and all the rest of it. 
and then they cry when they take their favorite children in so their throats get slit. And that's come out in Europe. It's come out in England. It's come out here. That's the bottom of the rabbit hole. Bring a little kid in, lay the plastic out in front of the prime minister. Five-year-old girl, double-edged dagger. Boom, slit their throat right there. And then I'm not going to get into the rest of it. But you want to know who you're dealing with? That's who you're dealing with. You want to take vaccines they give you? You want to drink water they set up for you? You want to eat that GMO? You want to work with them? You want to... I talked to somebody that did work on the Connecticut home of George Soros. There's a little castle out in the woods. The windows are all blocked out. All the furniture is black. There's black mirrors everywhere. You know what that's for? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They are coming for everybody. And I want to warn everyone that serves this. When you sign on to these people, you're signing on to hell itself, and you will pay in this life. Where they're taking this is not a very pretty place. Now, I was told Elijah Wood's a listener, and I was contacted for some other big child stars, and I just have not had these people on, but I do want to try to get Elijah Wood on since he's doing this. Um, I was told by one of these prominent stars that, oh, Elijah Wood you know, knows about all this too, and after you have me on, then you, know, you, you can have him on, and I just, you know, I just said, you guys, you just put your stuff out there, and then I can report on it. So I'm going to go ahead and try to get Elijah Wood on. Elijah Wood, Hollywood, in the grip of child abuse, scandal similar to Jimmy Savelle. Who is the guy that had a secret dungeon for Satanism and he ran the community orphanages and the, and the troubled children, the little girls? But he would procure the little boys and he was best friends with Prince Charles. That's in the news. And had the highest level access above MI6, the royal family. I'll just stop right there. Elijah Wood, Hollywood, in the grip of child abuse scandal, similar to Jimmy Savelle. Let's put Jimmy Savelle on screen for TV viewers. If you want to see the absolute archetype of the Renfields, you want to see a possessed person, yeah, click as he gets older, he just gets more. I mean, imagine, oh, here, he's here to drive a truckload of little girls to a mansion in the middle of the night. Oh, there's nothing happening. Six, seven, eight-year-old girls. Hello. Hello, and then now it comes out, Satanism, dead bodies, all of it. <sighs> wow. Wow. The rabbit hole goes deep. The roots are deep. Rip them all down. Elijah Wood, Hollywood, in the grip of child abuse scandal, similar to Jimmy Savelle. Wrecking the innocent of children, wrecking their souls, destroying them forever, feasting on their energy, interdimensional demons interfacing, ruling the earth. Or maybe they're just psychopaths and mentally ill. All I know is they're suddenly in the liberal media telling us pedophilia is loving. It's loving. <laughs> I'll get you and your little dog, too. <laughs> These things must be done, and delicately, huh? Hollywood is in the grip, a child sexual abuse scandal, similar to that of Jimmy Savelle in Britain. Lord of the Rings star Elijah Wood has claimed. The 35-year-old former child actor said pedophiles had been protected by powerful figures in the movie business and that abuse was probably still taking place. In an interview with the Sunday Times, Wood said he had been protected from abuse as he was growing up, but that other child actors had been regularly preyed upon at parties by industry figures. That's just the gateway to this. You all grew up with Savelle. Jesus, it must have been devastating, he said. Clearly, something major was going on in Hollywood. It was all organized, key statement. 
There are a lot of vampires. Ooh, ooh. There are a lot of vampires in the industry. People who only have their own interest in mind. There is a darkness in the underbelly. If you can imagine it, it's probably happened. Wood said the abuse was allowed to continue because victims can't speak as loudly as people in power. That's the tragedy of attempting to reveal what is happening to innocent people, he said. They can be squashed, but their lives have been irreparably damaged. Allegations that senior Hollywood figures have been protecting child abusers have gathered pace in recent years. And then it goes on. Gathered pace, just like the Catholic Church. <gasps> we don't hear about that anymore, do we? Oh, I'm afraid the blackmail worked. And now the crews and firm control. Mm -hmm. First they infiltrate, then they create the corruption. Now they have the leverage, and now they're in control. Oh, we're opening the door for ISIS, also child rapists. Come on in, my friends, fellow vampires. Intra, come in. The feasting is good. We have conditioned everyone. Their shields are down. Sharpen your knives. Get out your forks. The water's warm, the blood of children. Got a lot more news we're going to cover when we come back. But first, I do need to tell the wonderful viewers, everyone, that we have never sold so many T-shirts for Hillary in prison or come and take it, Moan Lambe, because we offered 50% off when you go to Infowars.com forward slash newsletter to sign up for the free newsletter and we send you the code. And I said it was going to end last night. One more time today, in about three hours, I'm going to send the code out one more time. So the promo code is going to stay open until midnight tonight because it's great to be able to have contact with you. It's great to get the e email insider, a bunch of our links, our articles to send off to others. It gets around a lot of the censorship that's taking place, and it's so popular. Now, again, this is about promotion of InfoWars and Hillary for Prison. We really don't make any money. I wish we did at nine ninety five. Uh, obviously, with the T-shirts, they cost us like six bucks, and after all the infrastructure and stuff, it's a lost leader. But it's going to be great to just keep this ball rolling because, uh, I mean, the T-shirts are popping up everywhere. They're all over the news. The, the Hillary for President especially. I want to thank you all that have been members of the InfoWars Insider Newsletter, and I want to just encourage everybody. We send out promo codes every day or almost every day. Sometimes we don't send emails out on like Saturday. That has 15% off, 30% off, 50% off. I mean, you know, the very best deals are for folks that are there with the newsletter. We have a lot of big specials for everybody else as well. We got 20% off on the incredible good halogen, nascent iodine X tube. The globals are doing everything they can to make sure you don't get real pure iodine that actually is absorbed by your cells. 20% uh, off, try it. It's a great way to get introduced to it. And your purchase funds the operation. And I want to thank you all for your support. We'll be back. Stay with us. I'm thinking about the New World Order and how sick these freaks are. It gets my blood up. Just total defense mode. Just think, ah! <laughs> I don't like these vampires. Do you? All these archetypes from history are telling us what we're dealing with. They want just a bunch of dumbed down, mindless, infighting, stupid sheep. And they can sit up there in their big armored compounds and just fly over us in their jet copters like a vampire science fiction movie while they play God. They set up a world where they can do whatever they want. Play with us, play with our world like where they're little toys, pawns. Let me mention this because I have a clip of it I want to get to. Guardian. Revolution in America when dying white majority is overthrown. The West that ended slavery, that opened its borders up, that did all this stuff. Sure, elites have used this for corruption, but but I mean, the, the, the backwardness in these other countries is incredible. Let's see, the virtue is elsewhere. And they have the guardian, Stephen Thrasher, who's obviously an anti-white racist in my view, but see, it's okay because he's not white. Come out and say, the guardian, Stephen Thrasher, is looking forward to the day when America's, quote, dying white majority is overthrown in a political revolution led by people of color ends the white supremacist system currently represented by Donald Trump's presidential campaign. See, it's all race-based there. And obviously, as a backlash, there's some race-based stuff from white people going on. But, but see, they want you just to identify with race and then identify if you're a, quote, minority, 90% of the world's population is not Anglo or less. 
that you then identify with Bernie Sanders and socialism when that's what the big banks want because they administer it. So they, they brand socialism and communism as an anti-white thing. And then the big mega banks put the Bolsheviks in in Russia and killed tens of millions of people. That's admitted. I mean, it's so horrible. Look at Venezuela collapsing. It's a system for idiots. Venezuela was almost as rich as the U.S. 50 years ago. Argentina had more money than we did. They got taken over by corruption, folks, and now look where they are. They have a crony system now, not a free market. Let's go to this guy. Let's I'm going to put this segment into this show because the pricks at The Guardian are protecting this asshole that hates freedom. So here we go. We're going to start this one again. And you'll understand why I think Donald Trump will be the 45th president of the United States. Every bold advancement of freedom in America is always met with an equally bold racist backlash. Like the emancipation of the slaves and reconstruction being met by our old friend Jim Crow. Or how desegregation of schools and public spaces burst a wave of resegregation in the 80s. Remember the Voting Rights Act of 1965? A half century later, we have poll lines so long that you can disenfranchise those who can't afford to wait. And new laws are excluding countless citizens who have voted their whole lives. So, when so. we voted against the odds to elect the first black president eight years ago, when we had a clear symbol that the, the double country black was literally body. becoming more black, why shouldn't we expect so our successor to be the meanest, whitest, most vile bigot possible? <laughs> the oh, very that's same that's Marvin Leiter, that's enough. Here's the deal. It's racial politics from the left. I mean, they're just, they're just throwing it around everywhere. And then they sit there with this holier than thou because this guy, oh, and he's a big gay award winning activist, of course, on top of it. So he's even more royal than everyone else. You know, just, oh my gosh, and you talk like this, you're so intellectual. You use the word racist and, and microaggression. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. All right, I'm going to cut to the other studio here in just a moment to Leanne and Marley Jones. Marley is heading up a photography department and graphics and, and, and with some of our other crew and also doing uh, a lot of great work uh, when it comes to our Instagram that we've really neglected and haven't been promoting. So we've had an Instagram contest. and They're going to be announcing the winner of that. I let Leanne and uh, Marley, um, Marley Jones, my sister, adopted sister, lover. Uh, she's been in the family since she was six months old and uh, from Korea, obviously. And uh, she just does a kick butt job. The best photographer out there I've found uh, and so that's why I was lucky enough to be able to hire her back. She worked here some when she was in college, uh, but she is now here back with the crew. And so everybody can go join our Instagram or follow us there. Because we have to have a lot of these you know, Instagrams, Facebooks, Twitters, because that's this is what's taken over the web. We've got to have outposts to get our InfoWars information into them. And then, yes, when they censor us on one, we use the other platforms to point out the censorship. And I've got Paul Watson coming on and also a reporter in the next few days. Uh, Miss Southern out of Canada, who's a great activist, a great reporter, and she just reported on and linked to on her Facebook, Facebook articles and articles admitting that Facebook's censoring, and they, they suspended her account and said, you're not allowed to do this. And she put a screenshot of that out, had her own website, was able to expose it. So see, you have to have a bunch of platforms, because it's like whack-a-mole. They try to whack us down, we pop back up. And that's the strategy. They've shut down our YouTube, Facebook before, but there's such a backlash and yes, I have lawyers write them letters. And I mean, I'm dead serious. I'll sue them. Because you can't advertise that you've got an open commons. You can't advertise that you're free and good and not censoring and then do it. There's not porn. There's not calls to violence. You can't shut us down. You advertise it's a commons. You ad we bring the value there. And that's what Congress and the Senate is finding right now. And that's why it's such a big deal to have Chinese-style censorship. I mean, they're officially doing it and trying to mainline it and having the media cheerlead and say, of course, it's their website. You know, let them control whatever you say. So Facebook told her, you know, Donald Trump is you know, not any Muslim, he's anti-ISIS. And so she basically put that out and then they just took it down. That's Lauren Southern. This is going on. This has happened to us a couple of years ago. We were spreading a Navy SEAL meme. Wait, only got a few minutes till we go to a break. So let me go ahead and throw to Marley and Leanne. Are you guys there? 
Thanks, Alex. Well, that's right. We are wrapping up our very first Instagram contest, and we are so excited with the results. So many people got involved. Uh, go to the real Alex Jones Instagram, and you can see if you use the hashtag InfoWarsGear, you can see how many people submitted uh, for this contest, just how many info warriors are out there, just a tremendous outpouring of support. So that was really awesome yeah, to see. Yeah, it was great seeing everyone's creativity, see what they came up with. And you can continue to use this hashtag um, throughout forever. And we're gonna be looking at it constantly to start finding content for our newsletter. We wanna see your support and just keep showing us those photos and showing showing what you're doing out there. Yeah, so we'll definitely uh, be putting a lot of your submissions in the newsletter, like Marley said, um, so you can check out all of your fans out there, your fellow info Marley, warriors. So and now, here was the thing. It was so hard. We were looking at everything over the weekend. There were so many submissions that we couldn't decide. So hard we to decide. We just could not choose a winner. We <laughs> did narrow it down for you. We, we narrowed it down to four. And so now you need to go to Infowars.com and click on this article, Spoils of War, finalists battle it out for the $1,000 <laughs> prize. And you'll see there is a poll there. You need to click your choice for the winner of the $1,000. Go to the poll and Alex Jones will announce the winner by the end of the show today. So, so be sure it's to get up to, to it you quick. Oh, out there. I see. I was, okay. <laughs> Got a little bit of Thank time. You. Just go and pick your favorite. We really want you guys to choose it for us. Like I said, it was just a, such a hard choice. So yes. please go show us who you guys think should win grand okay. prize. Well, I got that wrong. The winner will be announced today by the end Sorry, of the Alex Jones <laughs> show. So go to the website right now and choose your choice for the winner. Back to you, Alex. Okay, sorry, guys. We, we don't script a lot of this. It's teleprompter free. So I was thinking they'd already chose it. I'd forgotten that they wanted me to choose it. So <laughs> fun train wrecks here. Thanks, guys. I guess I will then choose. I thought they were choosing, and then I will announce it. So the announcement's coming up. We'll have them both back in studio here then. Uh, weather's coming up at the very end of the broadcast today. Ladies and gentlemen, we're now into hour number two. I am your host, Alex Jones. And for the balance of the hour, Wayne Madsen, InfoWars.com, investigative journalist. He also has his own award-winning website, WayneMansonReport.com. He's also a best-selling author, formerly in anti-submarine warfare, then in security, uh, actually internal security, not like security guard, but actually headed up a division looking for leaks and moles and spies uh, in the NSA, uh, in a senior position there, uh, directing projects. Uh, and then now, for the last 20-plus years, a major whistleblower, bigger than Snowden. It's just back then, they didn't arrest whistleblowers. He's been to Congress, testified, and then became a journalist. That's, that's what you do. Nowadays, you expose pedophilia in government, they arrest you. Or you expose drug dealing in government, they kill you. Or you expose Fast and Furious, like uh, the Border Patrol agent, and they kill you. We now have the investigators on. They killed Brian Terry to do that. So that's why this is so important. I was having Madsen on 18 years ago. And I was having James Bamford, former producer of Nightline, but also talking to whistleblowers on uh, with his uh, Body of Secrets and other books he wrote. So we've, we've known what's going on for a long time. Now the FBI has come out and says, look, you know, we want national security. We, we, we don't want you to know what biometric database we have. Well, I can tell you because the corporations always admit it when they start doing it. More than 18, 19 years ago, when I was really getting informed on all this, they were having big consortium meetings in Chicago, New York, and other places. And I read the articles on air from trade publications that listeners would send me, engineers and people that were there. So it's not in the news, but it's in trade publications. And they said, you know, every, all the phones will have a chip in them to track their location. You'll be able to dial in and listen to it even when it's off. This was all by law in 96 that it be in place by 2000. And they said... Tanning salons, uh, grocery stores, uh, libraries. We're going to have corporations push and subsidize thumbprints or handprints and driver's license facilities. And we're going to take all those databases and put them into a global database, not just an FBI database. Just like I first told folks 20 years ago, because a nurse gave me the documents from a military base in San Antonio, the U.S. Army runs a worldwide U.N. database of everybody's DNA and blood at birth. When they take the baby's blood and say, we're sending this off to the health department, they're not testing for a blood disease. <laughs> I remember with my kids, I said, you're not going to do that. we got to sign a waiver form. And I, don't you want your kids blood tested? And I said, yeah. Pull up the charge on the computer and you do that blood test here. And I went, you know, full well that goes to the health department. You're mandated. And they said, yeah, you're right. Whatever. 
I went further. I said, I'm not filling your forms out either. You're not taking the blood and you're not sending it to the army. And people started suing in Austin and Minnesota. And they were in the news, you know, saying, yeah, Alex Jones talked about it. It's true. And they found out it was a big nationwide scandal. And I'm not bragging, oh, look, we broke that. The point is, this stuff's all hiding in plain view because people like Wayne Madsen and that army nurse and others. And then they take your blood and they patent it. And then when you need a gene therapy, this is now happening 30 years later, CBS News headline, biotech patents your blood and DNA at birth, charges you in some cases hundreds of thousands of dollars for a genetic therapy because they say they own you because they got your blood at birth. Vampires. In spirit, not in reality. We're going to get into all this today. Uh, I want to get into the jihad going on, the alliance with the elites and Islam. Is this a triple cross? I know Cheney wanted to clash with civilizations, stir up the Muslims, put the radicals in charge so we'd have an excuse to go in and murder them. I'm against that. I was against the wars. But now we're going into another phase where you bring 5 million into Europe. The numbers are much higher here in the U.S. than they say. It's thousands in Austin admitted alone, but I'm told it's hundreds, Texas total. What's behind the Pope saying we don't need Europe's Christian roots and he abhors it. Let me give you the exact quote, then I'm going to my guess. Likens this to ISIS, dreaded, I'm sorry, not abhors, dreaded the Christian roots of Europe and its colonialist overtones and, and likened, it says ISIS went forth just as Christ told his disciples to go forth. ISIS goes forth and murders everyone. So now I'm meeting with the grand imam as the Islamic State says, attack Europe, attack the U.S. I mean, what is going on here? <laughs> but then the good news, what he's really an expert on, an expert on pretty much everything, Wayne's a really smart guy. And I'm not kissing his butt, but a few guests we get on I know are so smart because I do a lot of research and know even more than I do in many cases. And I'm telling you, listen to this guy. Everybody's getting mad at Soros. Hungary's prime minister, uh, uh, deputy prime minister or, or leader in Poland. And this is left conservative nationalists. They're all going, stop it. And then Wayne Madsen has his latest report out, CIA document, Soros connected to terrorist bombing in the 80s. CIA links top Hillary donor, George Soros, to terrorist bombing. So it all interconnects with the literal leader of Spectre. See, Ian Fleming copies reality. It, it's, not, it, it's not life imitating art, it's art imitating life. And joining us is Wayne Madsen. He'll be with us at the RNC. The DNC is going to blow up even bigger. Sanders is winning. They're trying to steal it from him. I want to send Madsen there. I may not go, but I want to send a, a good crew uh, to, the, to, the, to the DNC as well. Uh, Wayne Madsen, that's kind of my five-minute setup here of some of the pieces out there. I know you've always got a lot of other stuff on the, on the burner as well that you'll reveal here today. Uh, irons on the fire you've got. Uh, but uh, what do you want to cover first that I threw out there? Well, I think uh, the Soros um, story is interesting because, once again, we've had another uh, one of these very close elections, this one for the president of Austria. And I've always uh, referred to these close elections as the Soros flip because it doesn't matter whether it's a left-wing populist that's defeated or, in the case of Austria, it was a right-wing uh, populist who was defeated. These, uh, in, in the case of the Argentine election, it was a, a global banker, a uh, globalist banker named Macri defeated uh, the, the left-wing populist, a uh, very close election. And here we have in Austria, uh, the, the election was declared to the Green Party candidate who was behind in the polls for the last several weeks significantly, and he comes ahead and defeats the Austria Freedom Party uh, candidate who was against the open borders, allowing all the migrants in. He yeah, was so they stole it. I mean, the guy's way ahead in the polls, he, he loses. It. How are they going to get away with flooding him with Muslims? They're just going to start robbing the elections. Yeah, and they stole it with with uh, postal ballots, and that's how it's done. Um, you know, the all the regular votes are counted, and then they throw in the quote-unquote absentee ballots, and that's where the ballot boxes get stuffed. And, uh, and these close elections... They should not really be that close, but they give it the Soros and his gangs uh, of election election engineers uh, want to make it look close to make it appear that it was a it was a free and fair election. But it was oh so close. Uh, the Soros guy always manages to pull it out, whether that that's mockery in Argentina or 
uh, this guy, Van de Bellen. Sure, and that gets more political contributions to get dumped in as well to the political class uh, yeah. as long as it's a neck-and-neck -neck situation. Absolutely. So, and, you know, people say, well, what about the U.S. elections? They were close in 2000 to 2004. People forget George Soros was one of the initial investors in George W. Bush's Arbusto Oil Company. And uh, so, uh, you know, although he gave money to the Democrats, uh, Soros does quite well. Just with like the Koch brothers used to be the main financiers of the Clintons. Absolutely. So, you know, the Soros has enough money, he can throw it around everywhere. But the net result is these elections are engineered uh, for his uh, people to get in. Now, in 1987, uh, I have a CIA document that's saying, hey, how come there's these bombings going on in, in what was then Czechoslovakia? Well, Soros had already shorted the American dollar uh, after Black Monday. That was the crash of Wall Street in, 80, in October 87. Soros starts, uh, he makes money on shorting the U.S. dollar. And he throws all the profits, a lot of them, into Eastern Europe, which is starting to open up in the end, at the end of the 80s. And he's supporting his favorite people in Eastern Europe. Uh, so we have... Uh, in, 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 in the CIA, in, in one case, uh, there was a bombing of the Czechoslov Czechoslovak Communist Party headquarters in a, in a Czechoslovak city. And they said, oh, look, it, it, it's possible that this money is coming from overseas, from abroad. And it was because the, the, the only person uh, pumping money into the, the uh, Czech, Czechoslovak opposition in those days was George Soros and his friends. Uh, with the National Endowment for Democracy, which is a CIA-linked operation. So I, I defer to the CIA. They knew where the money was coming from. Some of it was theirs, and some of it was Soros's. So, Who would uh, you say really runs the CIA? I mean, I know it's a bunch of different uh, factions and people, but, man, it always seems to be right at the tip of the spear just trying to screw over America, but every other country. It's like it's against nationalism. It's against independence. It's against families. It's yeah. like cancer. I'm glad you asked that because I'm in the process of working on my forthcoming book, which is a glossary of all the CIA front companies, proprietaries, contractors, uh, partners since its inception. And it's becoming quite clear to me that when you look at how many operations the CIA has run and how integrated they were with Wall Street. It's really an attempt to take over the whole economy and have a shadow economy. Yeah, I think, I think the uh, actual master's for the CIA, it's not the White House or the National Security Council. It's Wall Street. It's the Council on Foreign Relations. It's it's That's right. their, their leadership is based in New York City more than it is in Washington D.C. And, and it was put in by the Royal Institute of International Affairs, not as a British satellite, but using the British Empire model of shadow governance. Right, and and you see how the CIA has infiltrated banks over the years and media companies and. Uh, trade unions. It was all done uh, via Wall Street operations. So the, the true masters of the CIA is, in fact, uh, the, is Wall Street. And it's been that way since 47. And you look at uh, Alan Dulles and the people who cre created the, uh, uh, the CIA when they were with its predecessor, the OSS, they were all Wall Street people. And they're crony capitalists consolidating the economy, as Johnny Rockefeller said. Competition is a sin. You having your own life is a sin. Investigative journalist Wayne Madsen joins us. His latest article, CIA document leaks and links George Soros to bombing in Europe. What is it this guy linked to? But before I go any further with him, I want to get into the election. I want to cover a lot of news. I want to take your calls, your questions for Wayne Madsen. On geopolitics, on the Middle East, on Trump, 800-259-9231, 800-259-9231. I want to give first-time callers in this hour a chance. Please be first-time callers. 800-259-9231. Wayne, in this short segment, let me ask you about this. I really want your insight on this. It seems very reckless of the establishment to best numbers we've got. It's about 5 million refugees that they advertised that the head of the UN program on refugees set up. I mean, he'd been the founder of the EU, Peter Sutherland.
top globalist moves down to be the head of the refugee program, advertises, sets up the conduit with Turkey, brings in all these mainly invaders that, as you know, came into Syria. You've been there. You've traveled there. You've been to Libya. You get your hands dirty. You get down in the muck. And, I mean, a good percentage of them are jihadis, obviously waiting for their orders to attack. How does the establishment get away with they're the ones that brought them in and then they allow this to happen? And why would they want to destabilize things that bad? I mean, I get they're bringing in terrorists, but why would they do it so nakedly? Why are they doing it here? Why is Obama hiding the real number of refugees here? That's clear. Uh, what's the real end game? What's this alliance with Saudi Arabia and Wahhabist Islam? What, where do you think this goes? Well, the, the alliance with Wahhabism is really... least your skype broke up my friend start back over you said the alliance with wahhabi islam please continue this is important let's reconnect with wayne madsen his skype just uh, shut down um we're gonna reconnect with him right now again this is paramount folks because they haven't brought five million people and that's the best numbers we've got it's about five million in the last three years it was couple hundred thousand the first year, over a million the next, over a million the next, and then upwards of two million, I mean, uh, uh, over the next two years or more, I mean, it's probably more than five million. And they would always say, we brought a hundred thousand, and we go, true numbers this year in Germany, one million, it's like, whoa. Sweden say, we brought in a hundred thousand, the same script, and it turned out to be like, you know, 500,000. France would be like, oh, we brought in a hundred thousand, it turned out to be over a million, and I mean, it is big. And man, these folks are wound up. They feel like they run things. They're getting aggressive. And then they're blocking nationalist elections that would just control their borders. And the EU saying quarter million euro fines. If you don't take whoever they say and they're not vetting them, they're letting them in with TB. I covered that last hour in the news, mainstream news. They have TB, they test them and then bring them in and put them on the street. I mean, this is like military sabotage of America. Wayne, your Skype broke up. Please continue, sir. Yeah, yeah, maybe that little NSA man in the middle operation yeah. going on there. But uh, I, it's clear that the Wahhabist Alliance has been a problematic one for the United States over the years. And 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 the, these uh, people are exporters of jihadism. Now, I've been to Iran, and the Shias are a much more moderate uh, and much more accepting of other uh, Islamic sects and other religions than are the Wahhabis. Uh, there are people in Tehran who practice uh, Christianity. And Judaism. And Zoroastrianism. And, and there's no problem. But you can't do that in Saudi Arabia. So I don't understand what Obama's deal is with people like uh, the, the Saudi royal family and and people and and Sunni neo Ottomanists like um, uh, Erdogan of Turkey. It makes no sense unless unless when Obama as a young boy did pray to Mecca in the Sunni madrasa in Jakarta, which I stood in and uh, saw where he faced Mecca with the other students. And and maybe John Brennan, his CIA director, really did convert to Wahhabism. Maybe that explains why we have this policy, because nothing else makes sense. Supporting these jihadists in Syria with weapons and sending the CENTCOM commander over to Syria to talk to these, these characters when, in fact, the Russians have been pleading with us to help them bomb the people. But they say, let's jointly do air attacks on them. And the U.S. says, oh, no, no, we can't do that. We'll be bombing our own people. Uh, they, they, uh, we just had the head of one of these jihadist groups in Syria visit Washington, D.C. Stay there, um, stay there, Wayne. Come back, you'll have the floor. This is important. Russia isn't perfect, folks, but it won't join the globalists in suiciding its people. I mean, that's what it comes down to. The, the globalists are suiciding civilization. I want to ask Wayne Madsen from his, his historical research. It seems like there really is some, some, something out to get Christians. Not only the big establishment mega churches in their fantasy land, government run 501c3, but I mean, all over the world, just nonviolent, all over the world Christians, groups just sitting there and they just get exterminated. No matter where they are, the UN, our government seems to side against them. The Pope, 
It's like the anti-Christian. There's a word for that. It's called anti-Christ. When you're anti-Christian, Christian Christ, anti-Christ. I say he's an anti-Christ spirit. I mean, even if you're an atheist, he is, his, his bent is anti-Christian now. <sighs> We're going to go there in just a moment with Wayne Madsen on WayneMadsenReport.com. Writes for Infowars.com. Proud to have him. Before I go any further, we sell nutraceuticals like DNA Force and X2 and our new vitamin mineral fusion amino acid powder that really is, from our research, the best high quality, you know, organic, concentrated, fruit punch flavored uh, way to actually absorb a multivitamin mineral system. That's available at InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com is the subsection. You should really try it. You should give it to your children. Um, if you don't take X2, most people are iodine deficient. It's just not in the soil. It's not in the food anymore. It's, it's, or it's tainted in the ocean. It's not pure. You can't absorb it as well. Just like there's vitamin B12 absorption problems. That's even in the New York Times now that, you know, headline, gut flora not allowing the absorption of vitamin B12 linked to massive IQ reduction, linked to Alzheimer's, linked to depression, linked to schizophrenia. Because of what's going on in our guts with all the pesticides and Roundup, it just, it's not absorbing it. You've got to go meth, methylcobalamin and things under the tongue. Or you've got to do it liquid so there's more of an absorption to maximize your absorption. So our food's so dead. McDonald's hamburgers don't rot, folks, under a Petri dish, but, but other food does. Other hamburgers do. I mean, that's just an example of how dead the food is we've been eating for a while. Survival Shield X2 is such a game changer that we're offering 20% off until the end of the month or while supplies last. And it looks like more is not coming in to the middle of next month. And at current sales rates with this special, it'll probably sell out by the weekend. And I don't want to sell out. I'm going to keep some back at the regular price and hope that lasts, you know, into next month. But I want to introduce you to it. So at 20% off, it's an amazing deal at $23. And I'm talking a couple drops in water, a couple drops under the tongue. This is pure iodine. It's not garbage bound to a bunch of stuff so it doesn't you know, taste like rocket fuel in your mouth. People are like, put iodine in your mouth? No, don't look at the stuff at the, the Walgreens and eat it, okay? Leave a hole in your stomach. This is the real, you know, high-quality, vetted stuff. Because halogen is powerful. This is the good halogen. This isn't a game. This is like, you know, in the same family, but, but the good one of fluoride. And then it blocks the fluoride, the other bad halogens. It goes into your glands. They get happy, they get full of it, instead of sucking in the bad stuff that they will suck in if they can't get iodine. So it's made me lose so much weight. I've been so much healthier, libido, energy, my skin. I remember a group three years ago, and we had the prototype, he goes, watch, your skin's going to get healthier, you're going to tan better, you're going to be, and it was just like, whoa, hair grows better, fingernails, it's just amazing. Infowarslife.com, check it out for yourself, experience it, read the five-star reviews, infowarslife.com, or call toll-free, 888 Two five three three one three nine er. Brain force is excellent as well. Ten percent off on anybody that signs up for auto ship at infowarsstore.com. And you get free shipping on orders of fifty dollars or more, so take advantage of that. And finally, we're gonna send out on the InfoWars newsletter one more time the promo code today. If you haven't gone and signed up for the free newsletter, that we send you videos, exclusive articles. With all the censorship going on, we need email because even if they do the internet kill switch during crises, we'll still be able to send emails out. Our experts believe so we need to have contact with you obviously to spread the word for marketing purposes for you know finally operation everything it's important something i never really pushed uh, a lot of folks are signing up 50 percent off on the hillary for president t-shirt and the come and take it t-shirts and at 9.95 you cannot beat that deal it's basically a lost leader but i just want to spread the word about hillary for president and it's it's so exciting so we're doing that four point star reviews info wars Store.com is the umbrella site, InfoWarsLife.com is the subsite. Also, when you're out there, go to WayneMadsonReport.com and read his books, get, uh, read his ebooks. They're, they're really, it's, it's, it's excellent material and support our local AM and FM affiliates, become sponsors, support the sponsors, send the station 100 bucks, spread the word, put a billboard up on the side of your barn. You know, if people with money or a little bit of means don't take action and get in the game and see yourself as a warrior for liberty, we're going to lose. But we're at a tipping point. There's huge global populism awakening. They call it racism. They call it hateful. They call it you know, nationalism, evil. That, that's just pure bull. Or it's an attempt to skew it and actually turn it into that. So that folks that aren't, well, quote, white or whatever, or, or from the West, won't want free market. It, it's, it's really a masterly branding job. I want to go to calls, but I want to give Wayne you know, the floor here for about five, six, seven minutes to get back into this jihad 
this Wahhabi is funded situation, where you think it's going. You masterfully laid out the infiltration, their funding of our leaders, that they may be converting to it. They may have, look, this is a billion and a half people. It's taking over Islam. It's the dominant form of Islam. Let's just double cross. If we want to be authoritarian. The globalists want that. Why not just go with Islam? Because there's kind of competing socialism, communism is authoritarian, kind of fascist models. But it seems like the left, one of the dominant groups of control, authoritarian left, seems like it really, like there's a courtship process. It looks like they might have gotten married. They might be having babies. You know, they, I mean, they might be shacked up here. Uh, there might be wedding bells here. Maybe they already happened. Wayne Madsen. Well, what's really troubling about this visit of this Mr. Al Nahas of, a, of the uh, group uh, Arar al Sham in Syria. Now, they're allied with al Qaeda, and he was just uh, allowed into the United States. It, uh, he visited Washington uh, to have talks. Uh, I can remember when we banned Cat Stevens, who became a Muslim, from entering the United States. But I guess it's okay if you're a terrorist, you can come here now. But uh, this uh, Nahas. Uh, and his group had just massacred 19 Alawites in Syria. And that's the same religious group that the Assad family uh, are members of. And they're uh, linked uh, uh, to uh, Shia Islam, the, the governing religion of the uh, predominant religion in Iran. Uh, so uh, why are we uh, having uh, al-Qaeda affiliate leaders uh, visit Washington? Uh, at the same time, Obama says he's going to veto uh, this bill in Congress to open up the 28 pages about Saudi support for the 9-11 attacks, uh, it, it passed unanimously in the Senate, and Obama says he's going to veto it. Well, why? Because if you read that report, you're going to realize not only were there high-ranking Saudis involved in uh, financing the 9-11 attack, but that some of these people have very strong ties uh, to some of our top political leaders. Let me just be clear to interrupt for just a moment. Pope Francis met with the top Sunni imam in the world, they're saying. That is Muslim Brotherhood, head guy, absolutely, it's, you know, confirmed that these people overthrew the Egyptian government, you name it, and, and, and the Pope is meeting with him. I mean, the headline could be, Pope meets with the head of Al-Qaeda. I mean, is that a fair statement? Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, you, you look at Egypt and uh, the, the, and get, we, it, it gets back to Soros, of course. Soros helped to fund the Arab Spring that brought down the Mubarak government, and then we got the Muslim Brotherhood, and now there's a uh, general in charge. Uh, and, uh, you know, when Obama said he was going to out make this outreach to the Islamic world, he actually should have been truthful and said, I'm going to destabilize the Islamic world, and that's exactly what he and Hillary Clinton... And then allow the total radicals to take control. Well, look, Hitler allied with the Sunnis. Um, the last time it happened before that, Napoleon did it in his last round, claimed he converted. Uh, so this, there's really a precedent for this, isn't there, in history, Wayne? Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, I mean, I think the, the, the idea, too, is that not only a clash of civilizations is brought on, but what they're doing is actually, it's a, it's a strategy of tensions. And uh, what the, what's happening in Europe now is is just keeping the strategy of tensions going. With the, you know, I mean, you can't walk down the street. I, I apparently sh the Sharia law is now being imposed in certain parts of uh, uh, Germany, including areas close to the Rammstein U.S. air base. So this is actually happening. So so uh, let me just stop here. This is you're I mean, you're a guy I really trust. A lot of other experts are saying this. You've never been some Islamophobe. You were against all these wars. You said it was to destabilize it. Now we see the double cross, though. It looks like they're actually going to wed Christendom with it under, you know, politically cor uh, correct control with Islam. And it looks like make that the new dominant overwrite of Europe and basically merge those two and take over the planet together. Or will there be another double cross against Islam after this? What's your gut tell you? Well, I mean, looking back at, you know, this book I'm writing about the CIA, the CIA has been involved in creating uh, 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 crazy religions and hybrids for years. Uh, the People's Temple in Jonestown was a CIA operation. The Moonies. Scientology, the Moonies, they were all CIA uh, uh, functions uh, to uh, create, basically it's mind control operations. As MK Ultra never left us, it still is with us. It's gotten more nuanced. It's gotten more high tech, if you will. And, uh, and, and, and so any kind of, you know, ecumen this ecumenicalism is fine, 
uh, the Pope for the Pope to be meeting Muslim leaders and and uh, sure, but it's not about merging them and getting rid of our religion. Yeah, yeah. hybrid religions. Uh, uh, you mentioned the mega churches. That that's another uh, that's another scam. Uh, oh, those that, are admittedly CIA run. Absolutely, many of them uh, are very close to the CIA. Because oh, believe me, I know. Big bucks. The the family, the fellowship that Hillary's a member of. Hey, man, I've had them. I'm going to do a report on this down the road. I've had, I've had one of the mega churches make a run at me. I mean, these people are hardcore. They're on power trips, too, man. I think because they got little CIA badges and stuff, they can do whatever they want. You, you yeah, I, I mean, you got one down in Houston that's run by Joel Osteen. I mean, that, that guy's so, uh, his flock is so involved with the uh, elites of uh, Houston, it's not funny. And uh, uh, But, the, yeah, the family, the fellowship is all about Christian capitalism. You know, make Jesus happy by making a billion dollars. And, by the way, give... Give ten percent of that to the church. That's by the way, be positive, and God will give you everything you want. It's voodoo. They're teaching magic. Yeah, yeah. And uh, again, this is uh, uh, yeah, this is a problem. But the the the, the, the CIA has been involved in this type of activities almost since its inception. Uh, some churches got wise to the fact that they were getting money from uh, these sources and and bolted. But you look at the early days. Uh, the CIA tried to pump money into the Quakers, for example, because they had contacts overseas and they were involved in Of the course, they're always, I mean, governments are always trying to take over religion, and we've got pretty much state-run religion to a great extent. That's why they push all this garbage in these liberal conservative churches. It doesn't matter, the Catholic Church. Let me ask you, what do you think Pope Francis's real deal is? Because, I mean, I think it's fair to say the guy's converting to Islam when he has the top Sunni imam, who's the religious leader that al-Qaeda bows to, I and mean, the guy's even wearing the Santa Claus hat the whole nine yards. You know, like the you know the guy at the first World Trade Center. I mean, the blind sheik. These guys are out of control, uh, and the Pope is bad mouthing Christianity. Meeting with them, is it fair to say the Pope is converting to Islam or or, or trying to marry it? Well, he is the first Jesuit Pope, and I know people when they you hear the word Jesuit, it's like saying Niagara Falls. They go nuts, you know. Uh, but uh, uh, anyway, he's uh, you know he's obviously very much involved in. This internationalism, and I think there's a, a problem with him saying, "Yeah, let's welcome all these migrants into Europe." Uh, uh, you know, does he not understand there is a price to be paid for this culturally? Uh, women can't walk down the streets in many uh, European cities and even small towns now without fear of being uh, uh, raped by these animals that came in from Syria and Afghanistan and and elsewhere. Uh, where's the Pope on that issue? He's very silent. Of course, he says if a, a Western woman is raped uh, by one of these Muslim uh, uh, guys, uh, then, of course, uh, you know, she can't have an abortion, you know. So, I mean, he's, he's a, just a total hypocrite. And he's behind 200-foot walls. I've been there. They've got their smallest walls are like 38 feet. They've got 200-foot walls, the biggest walls I've ever seen. Yeah, and also the Vatican has one of the most effective intelligence services in the world. Maybe he should start reading Vatican intelligence reports on what's going on in some of his own. Well, the wall was built when Rome got invaded and taken over, and then all that stood was Vatican City. The wall was built to keep radical Muslims out. Right, and by and radical he, Muslims invading, every 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 priest in Europe is potentially feeding intelligence into the Vatican Intelligence Service. And I'm sure there's reports coming from the same cities and towns in Germany and, and Italy and Spain and France and elsewhere where what, what the net effect of uh, this mass invasion of these migrants, uh, the problems that it's causing. He should read or at least ask uh, his own intelligence service what's going on in his own backyard in Europe before uh, you know, making these comments about, yeah, we can take in more. By the way, he, there is no sunlight between him and George Soros on this. Soros says, oh, Europe should take a couple more million. They can handle it. Uh, they're all the same sheet of music. It's total unification of tyranny. I want to start going to some phone calls right now. Wayne Madsen is our guest. I'm Alex Jones of Infowars.com. If you just tuned in, uh, we've got a lot of callers here. Carlos, Jeff, Bobby, Marshall, many others we're going to be uh, talking to here in this segment and, and the next. Uh, with Wayne Madsen. Let's go to Carlos uh, in California. Carlos, you're on the air with Wayne Madsen. Go ahead. Good morning, Alex and uh, Wayne. Uh, well, you know, uh, there's been a secret alliance between uh, 
the Wahhabi is the Muslim Brotherhood and the Western intelligence sources. As a matter of fact, Wahhabi who founded the Wahhabist uh, religion uh, was uh, mentored by British intelligence going back 200 years. And the Muslim Brotherhood, of course, when it was set up by the Saudi royal family, had secret connections with the British intelligence also. The madrasas where they taught Sharia law were being were being financed by the Western... Absolutely. They were financed to control all of those as long as it was right there at Mecca and the British intelligence could take over that, they could take over the Middle East. And you got to hand it to them. The British were already taking over the Middle East a hundred years before oil was found there. I want to go back to you, Carlos, but boy, Carlos knows his stuff, Wayne. Yes, and, and it's a fact, too, that the a British Foreign Office colonel named T.E. Lawrence basically handed Arabia to the House of Saud the T.E. Lawrence, otherwise known, otherwise known as Lawrence of Arabia, was a pedophile, and he liked the fact that the Souths believed in the uh, the tenet, uh, women are for making babies and boys are for sex. Uh, otherwise, if he didn't, if he wasn't a pedof pederast, as we know he was, uh, that Arabia today would be under the control of the Hashemites, not the Souths, the same royal family that rules Jordan today, and they are very, very moderate people. Uh, very moderate Sunnis, but no, that's that the British absolutely, and the Muslim Brotherhood was backed as a counterweight to communist influence in Egypt, especially after uh, uh, Gamal Na Abdel Nasser took over power and threw out King Farouk. Carlos? Yes. Go ahead and well, finish. Uh, yeah. you know, uh, well, you know, the, the, all these different fundamental, radical fundamental religions are deliberately set up by the Western, uh, the Western bankers and intelligence networks to, uh, to uh, of course, use the Hegelian dialectic and pit one group against the other in constant warfare. And what, what you see, and they plan so far ahead, the Muslim Brotherhood, uh, like you said, was uh, being used against communism, but they also were planning, of course, what they were going to do 40, 50 years later, use it as a terrorist organization so we could have our nice wars in the Middle East. Look at all the wars we have in the Middle East. I mean, it works. Carlos, you know, that's a great point. Carlos, tell us what you think. I'm going to ask Wayne. I totally agree with you. It's historic. It's fact. It's veritas. What's the next shoe to drop? What comes after this? What's the master plan? Where does this lead us? Well, I think that uh, the reason why the neoconservatives are siding with Hillary and dumping Trump is because she's going to be much more aggressive in expanding the wars in the Middle East than Trump will. So they're, they're putting their weight behind Hillary. And I think their, fin their final agenda is within the next four to five years, get us into a war with Russia, which will probably be the, be the beginning of a third world war. And it's probably going to be, be to expand, of course, the wars in the Middle East, war profits and all this. But they want the ultimate chaos, a third world war, which will then lead to the to, to, to their long-awaited Messiah who's going to come and sit in Jerusalem, which we call the Antichrist. I, I truly believe that that's probably part of their agenda. But I agree with you. What's crazy is even if you're an atheist, the elite believe in a one-world government and a world leader and a one-world religion. It's like they're fulfilling it all. Like it's either it was predictive programming or it's real or they took it as a blueprint. Regardless, it's manifesting, kind of like... Jules Verne, 150 years ago, wrote about going to the moon, and now we've done it. You know, it, it's 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 just, you know, our spacecraft. It's like we envision it; it happens. It's amazing. Uh, great, great points, Carlos. Please call in more. It's always great to hear such an informed person. I want to go to uh, Jeff and uh, Marshall and Bobby and, and 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 Tom. But briefly, let me ask you this question, Wayne: What do you really think about Trump? Because I, I mean, I guess he's got to meet with some of the top analysts, and then after he meets with Haas and stuff, they badmouth him. Meets with Kissinger. I like his rhetoric. I know they're really scared of him. I know he says he doesn't want to have a bunch of wars, but Bush said he didn't want to be the world's cop, you know, in, in, in 1999, 2000. So, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I like Trump, but I'm still, you know, trusting but verifying. What does your gut tell you about Trump and your, your research? Who does he really represent or is it really just himself? Well, I, I, I was troubled as much as a lot of people by his meeting with Kissinger. Kissinger's a war criminal. Um, he should be in. He's been indicted, uh, or there's bench warrants out for him uh, in countless countries around the world. And, um, and you know, I don't know what Trump was thinking 
He doesn't need Kissinger's vote. That's one vote up on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. What does he need his vote for? But he lost probably thousands, maybe tens of thousands of votes by meeting with Henry Kissinger. Because Henry Kissinger is, is a cancer. He's a top uh, globalist minion, but we know, though, I'm yeah. not saying he should have done it, but he but by meeting with him, that might make the gangsters back off a little bit. Insulting him and not meeting with him, they might kill Trump. I mean, I think... I think Trump's balancing it. I'm not endorsing what he did, but I'm hoping that's why he's doing it. Well, I hope it's keep your enemies close, uh, <laughs> keep your friends close and your enemies closer exactly. in this case. <laughs> um, but it is a troubling sign. It is very troubling. Uh, and, and and the fact that uh, uh, he's been offered a hundred million dollars by Sheldon Adelson, the casino guy in Vegas, uh, that's troubling as well. And and I saw recently that the uh, Miss South Carolina, Lindsey Graham has urged the Republican Party to support. And now there's no bigger neocons and, and then Lindsey Graham and John McCain, and they all see I agree with you, but they also yeah. see a bandwagon, and they, and they know it's going to be hard to stop. That's true. That's they want to jump on, like with Reagan, to be close to, you know, uh, sabotage. In McCain's case, I can see why. He's facing a very uphill battle uh, for the primary uh, in Arizona. They may dump him. Uh, as the Republican Absolutely, I hope so. Let's go to their call. We know if he wins, it's been fraud. They always cheat in, in Arizona, yeah. but he can't be the landslide, as you said. Uh, Marshall, in Delaware, you're on the air with Wayne Manson. Go ahead. How you doing, Solid? Good, brother. Go ahead. Um, hey, I heard Joe on your show Friday, and I'm so glad that he's going to be coming up here to uh, Philadelphia about a half hour from my house for the DNC. And I think Joe's on to something where he says he's getting reports about there maybe thousands of refugees in the Philadelphia area in the north, the northern neighborhoods, um, just with the amount of violence going on in the schools lately, that seems to come out of nowhere. And also the cop slaying, which was taken over by the FBI, that tells sure, me. Sure, the guy ran up and said, "I'll bar and shot the cop." Oh, oh, they're definitely. Let me ask Wayne this question. That's a great point, Marshall. I'll come back to you. It was in the news that my alma mater has 232 in the last year refugees from Syria and Iraq, and they're all basically Wahhabist. Then we call around to other high schools. They've all got hundreds. Elementaries have hundreds. It's thousands and thousands of kids in Austin alone. Then in the news, they go, Texas has had 400 and something refugees the last year. But Homeland Security won't tell the governor the real number. I mean, I, clearly they're covering up the real numbers. Yeah, I mean, if they, I don't know how they're getting in, but uh, yeah, it's a federal operation. The federal government can withhold information. Um, uh, you know, and, and where, you know, where does it make sense for a lot of these people to go? It would be Detroit and Dearborn. Uh, I'd, I'd be interested to see what the true numbers are there because there already is a sizable Muslim population there. But there's a sizable number of Shias up there, too. And as I mentioned earlier, the Shias uh, have no time for the Sunnis. They look at the Sunni, especially the Wahhabis, uh, the Wahhabi Sunnis. Uh, and the Shias do not get along. The Shias are much more open and accepting of other religions, whereas the Wahhabists aren't. But even if they're Sunnis but not Wahhabists, they're subject to this overseas, Saudi-funded uh, madrasa uh, indoctrination, mosque indoctrination. <clears throat> It'd be interesting to see how much Saudi money goes to some of these um, uh, Islamic schools in this country and mosques in this country. We know they're offering to build them all over Europe and here. It's it, it, it's just it, crazy. It, it, Getting back it, to uh, uh, Marshall, are, are you saying you think there might be terror attacks at the DNC? What are you saying, Marshall? I definitely think there will be attacks. Uh, the tri-state area here, Delaware, Jersey, Pennsylvania. If you look on the UN's own website, that Camden, New Jersey is a resettlement location. That's one of the most... Sure, well, ISIS areas. says they plan to hit um, the U.S. and Europe and I don't know how the politicians that brought all these people in are going to get away with it, but they already are. We'll be back in 70 seconds with Wayne Madsen. More your calls. Thank you, Marshall. Thank you. For all right. I want to see if Wayne can stay like 10 minutes in the next segment because I want to get into other stuff, what he's researching, what he's hot on the trail of, not just my questions and your questions. But we'll get a few more of the calls in, too. Wayne Madsen and WayneMadsenReport.com. Alex, then Bobby, and Tom. We should be able to, you know, to get to all of you uh, in the time I have left. I'm covering a bunch of other news we haven't gotten to yet and some video clips. And special reports, and I have Leanne in studio too about the winner of this uh, Instagram contest. Alex in New York, thanks for calling. You're on the air with Wayne Madsen. Uh, hello, hey guys. So my question is a little bit different on uh, than what you guys were talking about. I um, my mother is part of this political movement, and they're trying to 
overthrow uh, the current Armenian government. And I remember you had a guest who talked about how the same forces that overthrew the Ukrainian government were trying to do to the other Russian-friendly uh, post-Soviet Federation. I met with the leader of the movement. I, I kept quiet, and the guy is uh, anti-male, very globalist, and uh, I played nice. So, you know, I'm just trying to find out more. I was wondering if Wayne knew more about it. Uh, yeah, I mean, Poland says Soros is trying to overthrow them right now. I mean, these people are out of control. Uh, Wayne? Yes, the Armenia is definitely a uh, target for the, uh, as a, a target of a themed revolution. We know that uh, Soros uh, bankrolls these along with USAID and the National Endowment for Democracy. Uh, the, the current government of Armenia uh, is very friendly to Russia. And the, what the U.S. is trying to do is is march NATO all the way to where the North Atlantic Treaty Organization will become the North Pacific Treaty Organization. Uh, they want to march NATO all the way east uh, into Siberia. And of course, there's some countries in the way that are posing a problem. Macedonia was one. Uh, they staged a, an attempt to overthrow the democratically elected government there. They're doing it in Armenia, which has a democratically elected government. Uh, they uh, did it successfully in Moldova. Um, and uh, this is what's going on. And Hungary and Poland uh, have said that Soros is involved in operations there to destabilize their government. And Wayne, so, here's another key tidbit. Macedonia, yeah. like Turkey, is a key border where all these Muslims are coming across and getting through. So Soros and NATO are blowing open the gates to Europe, yes. invading Europe, the opposite of what NATO is supposedly for. That's right. The destabilization of Macedonia basically helped open up the Greek Macedonian border to this influx of refugees. Now, Greece let them in because Greece has this so-called leftist government, Syriza. Uh, uh, Alex Tsipras is the prime minister. He said, oh, I, I'm, I'm opposed to the EU. I'm opposed to that. No, he, he was a Trojan horse for Soros. He just uh, forced uh, the Greek population to undergo more uh, austerity measures. Uh, and yeah, their taxes tax are going tax. up record level designed to bankrupt them. Uh, yeah, cut, cutting services, cutting pensions. So uh, the, here was a case where there was a Soros Trojan horse introduced as the savior in Greece. Uh, the previous governments were Soros influenced. And the, the, so see, this is how Soros operates. He operates on both sides. In Latin America, he uh, he supports the, the fascists that have just taken over Brazil, for example, uh, which is now going to undergo drastic cuts in social services. Uh, that, that, and Argentina, both these countries will be pauper nations soon. Ho, oh, oh, ho, boy, I tell you, thank you, uh, Alex, for that great question. We're going to talk to Travis, Bobby, uh, Tom, and a few others. I'm going to ask Wayne first, though, what other big stories he's working on that we'll see at InfoWars.com in the days and weeks to come. Also at WayneMadsonReport.com. Again, they want to censor our websites in this show. It's so important you spread the word. This is a war. This is an info war, and you're on the front lines. People ask why all this is happening. A lot of it is the complexity of the world today. It allows corruption, manipulation, conspiracy to hide. But more and more, it's the unaccountability of multinational corporations that are monopolistic. Their main ideology is eugenics, control of populations. And they are socially engineering the public to be very servile, very stupid, very poor. Because these are very ruthless, greedy, hateful people, the opposite of altruistic. But they have this whole global fake, synthetic, liberal claim that they have the moral high ground and you've got to adopt their language and their systems. And then they will finance two or three different sides of a conflict, as Wayne Madsen was just exposing, an investigative journalist, formerly of the National Security Agency. And they write books on it. Countless, Bazinga, Brzezinski, Curl, Quickly, many others, they write books explaining it that in some cases are a thousand pages or more long that are for the State Department and for the CIA. They think you're so dumb, they even allow it out in public. Because they're like, the public's not going to read this book, how we control them. You think Wayne and I just figured all this out? I mean, we've read their books, we've then studied it, we've been inside of it and out of it. In his case, I sit here and watch it. I mean, it's so clear. And the biggest con game is it's destabilizing the world, it's making things fall apart because that's how they get control. To the point they're having to build armored keeps and armored fortresses, redoubts, hideaways. 
with airfields, you know, 100 miles from anywhere. This is in the news. We told you about it first because we have the sources. Because I think everything may melt down. Wow, great job. Great job. I mean, as if these elites can screw everyone over and not have it come back on their kids. And I, I always read about these elites. Some in Redstone worth tens of billions of dollars. Total gangster. He's, you know, for months can't even talk. He's 92 years old. The underlings under him are reportedly taken over CBS, Viacom, biggest media company in the world. His daughter's in there. And, you know, Soros is almost there, too. It's like. You guys ought to be like LBJ, who at least before he died, repented. And I know people that in his family that knew him. I mean, he was breaking down, crying, scared of God at the end. And just, he didn't want to people's, I'm not going to get into it, but I, obviously a lot of the Johnsons live here and their cousins and people and prominent business folks. And uh, he would come into their businesses and just absolutely break down crying. He, had full, he didn't run again. He had all the power, everything. He just finally woke up and said, what have I done? Not these people like Redstone and folks. I'm telling you, man, they need to repent. They need to stop what they're doing. Just because they can pull this wickedness off and confuse people doesn't mean that it's okay. But separate from them waking up, I want to ask Wayne about this and take a few more calls. We have to wake up, those of us that are smart enough to understand this and really rally and organize and not just hate the dumbed-down public. And I know they're like piranhas and dangerous lemmings or a stampede of cows. I get it. but. A lot of folks go, well, isn't it lucky for us the public's so dumb? And I'm like, no, it's not lucky for us. It's dangerous. And I'm not going to just get off on it and go, I know how it works. Other people don't. I'm all sardonic. I just, it's, it's because I got common sense, folks. I have empathy, which is a good instinct. I see a dog run over by a car flopping around. You know, I feel for it. Well, I see it happening to humans. I feel more because I have empathy. And they've taught us in this modern world not having empathy is, is good in general, but have it only when the media says, flip a switch on, and then you can have empathy for whatever little special thing they're doing. We need to start having our own emotions and our own concerns that come from us and come from our ancestors and come from our instincts and come from God and common sense. Wayne, I didn't mean to go off the deep end here. I want to go to some calls and let you get into other big topics you're working on. But how do we stop these people? I want to ask you that question. I mean, do you agree with what I said about them, or what do you add? I mean, I just really don't like to see where the world's going. It's obviously going into total macabre, where just like ISIS, the extremists just battle with each other to be more and more extreme until we end up with the, you know, doomsday, uh, you know, the character from Superman or something, just pure evil. Yeah, I wonder how many of these, these upper echelon people even have uh, a conscience. Uh, you know, you see the decisions. Yeah, I, I, I also have read and heard about uh, LBJ toward the end and you know uh, uh, you know he grew he grew a ponytail and he, he became basically one of the hippies he used to rail against when he was president and they were outside protesting the war so uh, but but you know I don't think a lot of these people uh, really think too much about uh, the, the harm they've done uh, you know people like Soros and Kissinger. I mean, Soros gives money to all these causes around the world that don't seem to do any good. They seem to cause more problems. Uh, so I don't know what kind of great benefactor he is. And he's thrown billions around uh, the planet. I mean, he, he bought Human Rights Watch basically uh, for 200 and, or $100 million. And uh, he's invested heavily in Amnesty International. Neither one of those two organizations are, are the same organizations that I worked with back in the 90s. They become uh, promoters of disruption, uh, promoters of color and themed revolutions uh, on behalf of the United States and the neocons. Uh, uh, and, and so I, I don't even pay any attention to Human Rights Watch or Amnesty International anymore because they're bought and paid for. Well, if somebody can send me the clip, I'd be very thankful. I've seen it many times on in the internet i've played it probably 50 times and then suddenly about six years ago i went back to find the 1999 or 1998 60 minutes interview with george soros with the, whoever the blonde lady was on there stall i think's her name and you, yeah yeah and, and and just like folks you didn't believe me you can go look up on two different channels nbc and cnn madeline albright got asked you know 100 000 kids have died under your sanctions alone is that a good price to pay she says yeah it's a good price to pay i mean she really said that that clip's still on the internet. We can find that and play it. But the clip on Soros, I have had my whole crew look for days in the aggregate. I mean, they've spent days looking for it overall. And, and, because, and, and, the, and back then, we found it and didn't know how important it was. It got erased off some hard drive. But they would hit us with copyright. We'd put it up even 20 seconds. But he goes, 
She goes, do you feel bad about helping the Nazis round up your fellow Jews? And he goes, no, I don't feel bad at all. I did what I needed to survive. And it's like, oh, I ate my kids to survive or I whatever. People go, well, he was, they would have killed him. What? What? I mean, it's just, it's just, it's like, it's okay. You know, George Soros did, and now it, it's okay. He does this. It's like, it's crazy. Yeah, and a lot of people um, aren't aware of his father. His father, uh, Tividar Soros, was the uh, promoter of Esperanto, this international language that was supposed to replace all of our other languages. Everybody would be able to communicate with one another. You talk about a globalist project. Fortunately, one that seems to have failed. Uh, uh, and I, I don't think they'll run with that anymore because basically the Internet has taken over from that Esperanto project. I mean, you don't... And let's you, expand. That's key. These people yeah. have an instinct to dominate and control. They never get it fully in control because their own people are backstabbers. They will not get their new older project. People right. know about it now. It's going down. Do you agree with that, Wayne? Right. And, you know, Esperanto was this, obviously this idea to have everyone speak the same language. It would be easier to control everyone if you spoke a common language. But uh, uh, we don't need that now. Now they're trying to impose this on the Internet because you don't need to know one language. You've got these automatic translation systems that, that, that do that for you, basically. But they and, manipulate it. Yeah, they can manipulate the emojis. it. emojis. Absolutely. So, um, uh, yeah, you've you got to be constantly vigilant uh, against these people with this kind of money. And I... I I only mentioned Soros. He's a he's a good case in point, but there are other. Look, the Koch brothers are no better with what they do uh, and uh, throwing their money around. I mean, they're they're talking about backing. Well, at least one of them's talking about backing Hillary Clinton against Trump because they. Yeah, don't that's like what the caller. I mean, the, the money's against him. The establishment's against him. These established people want to meet with Trump to try to compromise him. Uh, and so, I mean, I'm sure he knows that. But if I see him start moving towards their positions, then I'm going to have an issue. I, I don't care if he meets with them. He says he'll meet with Kim Jong-un. He says he'll meet with anybody. Yeah. So I, I think he's kind of clear on that. And I think because he's already said he'll meet with the Iranian leader and meet with whoever, I think that I actually get his point. But but we'll see. Well, I think I think it's a sign of leadership to be willing to meet with, with anybody that uh, you, you need to meet with. Uh, so, yeah, I, 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 I take a wait and see approach as well on it but uh, uh kissinger i mean really i mean there should be no reason why that guy should even still be alive uh let alone still i mean there's pictures of him hugging hillary clinton she loves the guy i mean what does she love about him the fact that he uh caused these coups he's responsible for millions of deaths around the world maybe that's why she loves him but uh she has great respect for that man i wonder i wonder if she has a similar respect for people like paul pot and adolf hitler and uh, oh, they love it. Joe Stalin. Let's go ahead and take a quick call here. I want to do one more segment. I'll let you go. But I want to get to other topics you're covering. Travis in Tennessee, you're on the air. Your question for uh, Wayne. Hey, Alex and Wayne. Uh, thank you guys for what you do. I pray for you guys. Uh, thank you. I, I wanted you. to say one thing about um, the mega churches and then something about TSA is with the mega churches, you know, Alex, you call it spidey sense. I call it the Holy Spirit. Uh, I've I've looked these guys in the eye, shaking their hands, some of these leaders of these mega churches, and it's like a quickening almost, like they sense that I sense they're evil. And uh, and you can tell they get very uncomfortable. Uh, I even had my wife like witness it. I was like, watch, I'll shake his hand, watch how he reacts, you know, and, and I can just see right well, Yeah, because it's a special office when you're claiming you're a man of God and love people and you're actually an operative. Uh, it's just, they're so obvious. I mean, look at Glenn Beck. He is the biggest flaming Benedict Arnold I've ever seen. I'm skipping this network break. This is too important. Uh, Wayne, imagine your comments on that. No, I agree. I mean, you look at uh, John Hagee, for example. He's down in Texas. He's raking in a lot of money, a lot of it from uh, overseas, I might add. Uh, I, actually, I actually heard him and played it on air. He actually wrote in a book, he goes, Jesus was not the Messiah, but a rebel Jew who was dealt with wisely. That's the exact quote. Yeah. Right, right. I mean, I mean, can you imagine? I mean... Uh, the, the only thing that separates John Hagee from a guy like Rush Limbaugh is the fact that uh, one has uh, some uh, license to uh, as an ordained minister, uh, whereas uh, uh, Limbaugh doesn't. But, I mean, there's really no difference between these two guys. Well, I mean, the Pope may come out and say Christ was not the Messiah, but a Jewish rebel who was dealt with wisely. That's an exact yeah. quote, by the way. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, there's there's no explanation for people like that. And Glenn... You know, Glenn Beck, he's um, obviously, 
he doesn't like Trump because, um, you know, his last candidate, uh, Romney, I mean, Glenn Beck. I was Beck's about to say, when you got enemies like Hillary Clinton and, and Glenn Beck, I got to be for you. I mean, I yeah, you. yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, the reason he, 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 he still can't get over Mitt Romney's loss being a good Mormon, um, you know, Romney backed Ted Cruz and that didn't go anywhere. And Romney originally backed uh, Jeb Bush. That didn't go anywhere. So, hey, who do you think the Mormon hierarchy's ally with? Because the average Mormon I run is really smart, knows what's going on, hardworking folks, whatever. But it seems like the leadership of the Mormons, all these different liberal senators and people in Orrin Hatch, it seems like they're, 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 I mean, what's going on there from your research? Well, it's, a lead, it's another mega church. Let's face it. I mean, the leadership, you know, a, a fish rots from the head. <laughs> so you look at the top. Uh, echelon of these uh, these uh, mega churches, and that's what you get. Look, I mean, look look at L. Ron Hubbard, the guy who started uh, Scientology. Look at this David Miscavige guy that took it over. These guys are all these are guys guys are all con men. Uh, I mean, uh, and uh, they're all out to make money. And you know, as long as uh, there's fools like um, uh, uh, t Tom Cruise and uh, and, and John Travolta around to give these guys money, you know, they're going to, they're going to be, uh, how, how's that work? I mean, you, you, I've seen some connections to that, that the, the government wants to use cutout groups to test things. So they can burn them later if, if the operation goes bad, but it does seem that the, the power structures turn more against Scientology. Is that because they got too big for the britches or? Oh, it was a case. I mean, the IRS was going after their, uh, their status, but then, uh, they reached an accommodation and ever since then, uh, they're treated as a religion. Um, and, and, and how did they go, how did they combat the IRS? They started sending infiltrators into the IRS. This is how they operated. They, they basically took over the town of Clearwater, Florida. Oh yeah, infiltrators, those, those are a lot of fun. Where they now have 67 buildings in the downtown area and they're calling the shots. Uh, people try to stand up to them, uh, but that's a great test case, isn't it? For, for uh, the CIA and how you take over a medium sized urban area uh, by a group that comes in and just sets up opera an operation and expands it to basically take over the entire uh, city. And that's what they did with Clearwater. And they're yeah, still why do you think Germany banned them? Because it's got its own thing going. Yeah, the French and the Germans considered this uh, 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 cult uh, or, or mega church, whatever you want to call it, to be uh, very Nazi-like. And they, they banned them for a long time. But now the State Department says any country that goes after them is guilty of religious violations. Yeah. Well, uh, let me expand on that. I mean, without even just singling, because I don't get into these infights with religious groups and megachurches, say megachurches. I'm telling you, a lot of the big megachurches in Texas and Austin, I've, I've been to them to, and, and investigated it, but I mean, they are, they are, they are cults, man. And they are doing stuff, but they think, oh, it's a big Baptist church or it's a big evangelical, and they have no idea. I mean, of course, evangelicals, I thought, are good people. I mean, I grew up like that Baptist evangelical, but this is, this is, this is weird, man. These yeah, places they, are creepy. Absolutely. And one of the things they try to do um, is the, the family, the fellowship. They try to take over uh, existing churches and put their people in. First, they put them in on the church councils and get them in as elders. And oh, then yeah. They, the, 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 the First Methodist here in town literally is a yeah. Bill and Melinda Gates, George Soros advertisement bureau. It actually says that. Right, right. And and so uh, that's that's what happens. Look, some of these mega churches, they're like businesses. They don't want their flock to go to Starbucks, so they opened up. They open up their own coffee shops inside inside the churches. They'd rather wow. have the people buying their coffee there. They've got they got their own daycare centers for for you know they're earning a profit. So they're like little little compact cities, and then you just go to them and think you're saved from the rest of the collapsing world. They tell you, just don't worry about the evil. Jesus is coming. You know yeah. he's going to teleport you up there, and Scotty's going to be up there, or, or whoever who's the guy that energizes on, on the in a little little you know beam you up. Up there to the right. Enterprise. I mean, who's the guy that runs the Energizer thing? Scotty runs I, the engines. Who runs the transporters? I think there was always different characters that ran the transporters. Well, exactly. But they're up there with St. Michael, and they just beam you up, and, and everything's fine. I, I want to take a few final calls to you, but Wayne, what else are you working on right now? Well, there's an interesting story coming out of Washington, one that I uh, reported many years ago. Uh, the uh, retired uh, former assistant inspector general for the Department of Defense a guy named John Crane has come out and said that uh, whistleblowers that came to him were punished because they brought uh, issues of fraud, waste, and abuse to his office, and that the NSA was one of the worst in punishing its whistleblowers. 
So what this says is that Ed Snowden, we had Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama both say, well, there were other avenues for Snowden to bring this to our attention. Uh, he said he tried, but now we got the uh, assistant IG at the Department of Defense saying, look, we punished whistleblowers. I had these same whistleblowers come to me and say, uh, they said, we tried the IG and we were, our names were being turned into our bosses. We were being retaliated against. I know one uh, that uh, went sure, to but the quantify IG. that for folks that don't know. They say, oh, you're, you're a spy because you went public. Well, if you went to the government and they start persecuting you and, yeah. and, and then won't, t and won't even investigate, you've got to go public. Right, right. And, and, and so this, this happened uh, in many, many cases. Uh, I know several people that went to the IG <coughs> and they were, um, they were basically turned in like the Stasi. Um, and, uh, and, and, and so in your day at the NSA, when you were there looking for leaks, that was your job. What would have happened if this kind of stuff was going on? I guess it had been heard by Congress. It would have come out or. Yeah. I mean, I, back when I was there, there was a procedure. If somebody brought something, uh, to, to the, uh, IG, uh, or the general counsel's office, it would get passed on up the chain. There was no, uh, retaliation, but, one of the things that Obama has done, not only has he invoked the Espionage Act more than any other president combined, uh, but he's prosecuted people who were whistleblowers. He's, he's fired people. Uh, Tom Drake was another guy at NSA. Sure, do you think all these people that are going along with this and admitting they just follow orders to lie, do they understand how dangerous this is for their own future in the country? I mean, it's just so weird that we used to have morals, at least to some extent. Now yeah. there's like, there, there's no bottom. There's no ceiling. It's just... Anything goes. I mean, what's coming next? Yeah, well, NSA became uh, its own Stasi. They have their own Q group, which uh, uh, goes after whistleblowers. So there was a lot of uh, uh, communication between the IG office and internal security at NSA. Now it's all coming out uh, from this fellow, John Crane. Now it's being, he's, he's retired, I understand, so uh, they can't do much to him now. Uh, but he had, it's interesting, he had to wait until he got out, retired to bring this information forward. Uh, look, it even involves the Senate. I know whistleblowers in NSA that also brought this stuff to the attention of Barbara Mikulski. Thank God uh, she's leaving. Um, this old battle axe has been there too long. Uh, but there were other uh, members of the Senate and House that would uh, basically turn in uh, congressional correspondence from people inside the government to their agencies. So this is basically what this guy John Crane is talking about, uh, and it, it got worse under Obama. There were he he violated the Whistle uh, Blowers Protection Act. Uh, he never took it seriously. I mean, his, what he says and what he does are two different things. If you are in the government, you can see it uh, in a very stark fashion. Uh, how this guy Obama uh, he preaches this thing, but he he doesn't practice what he preaches. But it's okay because he's liberal, so it's okay to persecute the press and, and, and destroy our basic freedoms. You can see why they put him in there to manipulate folks. Uh, let's talk to Chris in Utah on KTKK 630 AM. Uh, you're on the air, Chris. Hey, guys. I'd like to talk about the prospects of Mr. Trump getting into the presidency. I don't look at him as a Ron Paul or as a threat to the establishment in any way, shape, or form because the media is giving him 24-7, 365 coverage but suggests to me uh, that they do not look at him as a threat. Well, how could they not, though? It's kind of hard to ignore the nominee or the guy that's going to be the nominee when he says Bill Clinton, you know, and he's been investigated for rape. I mean, it's the incendiary stuff he says. He was already a superstar, but I get your point. Go ahead. Well, I think that's just a disguise. What I think they're going to do is they're going to allow him to get into office, and then they're going to sabotage the economy and not only blame it on him, per se, but to blame it on his entire movement. And I think that will step back the conservative slash Liberty okay, are you saying he's not conscious of that? Because you could be right. This is a giant foil that way. That's really sophisticated, though, and they don't like to gamble and do something like that. They like to control their person totally. I mean, is that what you're saying? Oh, yeah. He could be very well completely oblivious. Well, listen, Wayne's, got, Wayne, Wayne's going. I'm going to come back and talk to you on the other side. Don't, don't, don't hang up. I'll take, I'll take the other calls, too. Stay there, Chris. Briefly, what do you think about what he just said, Wayne? Well, yeah, I think that's always, look, you know, they always say the office makes the man. The man doesn't make the office. We're talking about the presidency. And he could uh, get sworn in and from day one. He could be uh, uh, like Jesse Ventura, what happened to him when he became governor. He's going to be meeting with people who are going to be giving him order, orders, and he's not going to be able to do anything else. Now, he can complain internally, 
But look, at one, when presidents get out of line, this country has a way of taking them out of power. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Thank you, Wayne. Great job. Coming up, Leanne McAdoo and Marley Jones are going to be in the other studio live with us. They had a contest idea for Instagram. They did a great job. It's wonderful to see the InfoWars listeners around the world taking action. It's like a $1,000 prize. We want to promote the Instagram more because I never promote that. that you know, other platforms get the truth out. And then I thought they were announcing the winner. I somehow misheard it. And I'm like, and tell us the winner. And I go to them. And I'm like, no, it's we're announcing it. You know, you're announcing it later. Uh, but uh, I was correct that I'm letting them choose it. I just announce it. So, ladies, ladies, coming up the next segment, you are going to be announcing the winner, which is pretty much based off the votes on InfoWars. But we also, you know, put some of that into it. But folks are voting there at InfoWars right now. So that is coming up. And for TV viewers, we'll show you some of the Instagram stuff. We'll also give you the Instagram account so that uh, you can go there and check out the information for yourself. Because obviously, if we get a bigger Instagram account, then it'll get rated big on the, on the Instagram system and we'll reach more people. When they try to censor us on Facebook and Twitter and everywhere else, we'll have another platform. So it's kind of like hopping from stone to stone across the lava as the lava is rising. And we're just here pointing out the Chinese style, that Chinese style communist censorship is here. And that's what Joel Scalzo pointed out. I mean, they're officially censoring, officially admitting it, officially engaging in this. I want to go to your phone calls, but I'd like to take articles that tie into this to, to illustrate it. But uh, you can follow us uh, at uh, real underscore Alex Jones on Instagram. So uh, at real underscore Alex Jones and at hashtag InfoWars gear or hashtag handcuffs for Hillary. That's also going viral. But uh, the Mercury News, the San Jose Mercury News. The same publication that uh, exposed the CIA drug dealing. And then they, of course, uh, the globalists killed Gary Webb, but not the truth. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg replacing four next door Palo Alto homes. I love it when they're scared of somebody. They give it a wimp name. That has nothing to do with what it is. It's, it's that should be Zuckerberg has bought up the neighborhood and is tearing it down and building himself more houses for guests because he doesn't want neighbors to be able to see him, and he's put up a big fence. Which is absolutely cool with me in America or anywhere else. But here's the problem, bub. You lied to people and told them they had privacy and you weren't selling their data when you're a giant corporate and CIA snoop arm to try to manipulate and control reality and take over the web. And you call your users dumb effers. You're the one meeting with the communist Chinese. You're the one trying to sell the idea of censorship on Facebook. And if they can do it on Facebook, they can do it anywhere. People always go, well, why do you use Facebook, uh, you know, if they're going to censor you? Because if they get away with it there, they get away with it everywhere. And I agree, we should have our own websites and our own platforms and our own systems. And I've got Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com and PrisonPlanet.tv and we syndicate to AM and FM stations and uh, some TV stations and the rest of it. And that's great. I'm one of the only people out there talking about real issues is actually on some stations. But I need to be multifaceted everywhere I can. I've got servers in Europe. And one of the countries known for not having as much censorship that isn't part of the whole UN takeover. Good. Servers in two countries in Europe, actually more than that. But this is what we go through to not be messed with. And we've been messed with so much. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying they're fighting to keep this from getting out to people. Because folks tune into this, it's game over. The most arrogant pseudo-intellectual liberal actually listens for a week. They'll go, wow, I want to be a real liberal, not a fake liberal. I want to really be part of the renaissance. Alex Jones is right. Because, I, I mean, I'm like selling snow cones in hell here. Don't people that have sold out of the establishment get, when you get down to the total sellout point, you get almost nothing for selling out. Now, I didn't sociopathically 25 years ago to try to get in the media because I thought, oh, there won't be anybody, you know, in the market of liberty out there. No, they were trying to suppress it then even harder. But I learned real fast that telling the truth was where it was at. 
I wanted to tell the truth. I wanted to defend the Second Amendment. And I looked at all these sellouts and all these sociopaths that would sell their grandmother out for a stick of bubble gum. And they think it's so cool to be with the establishment. Oh, my gosh. I, I do. They, they just look at you like idiots when you do that. The globalists, when I've been to some big events and been invited to meet with people and stuff before, they are scared and respectful of me. So that some have been arrogant in the end when I don't, you know, sit there and get on my knees. And I'm very, very, very polite. I say, listen. These systems have never succeeded. You're lying to yourself. You're destroying free will. You're circumventing the people. And you're dumbing people down to control them. That is a true sin against the species. And I can't be part of this. Plus, the elites above you are into some really bad stuff. And I'm not signing on to that. My gut, my spirit goes, whoa. whoa. I mean, people ask, am I, am I fearless? Let me tell you something. When I think about selling out, I'm not even thinking about it. But I'm thinking about thinking. I, I'm just pondering what it would be like, and I feel absolutely cold and removed from God and scared. I feel, just um, imagine myself pulling away from God, pulling away from the light, from love, from, from honor. It's like, oh, oh, no, 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 no. I'm like, New World Order, do whatever you got to do to me because I'm not afraid of you. I am God-fearing. That doesn't mean I'm perfect. doesn't mean I have all the answers because, you know, my, my soul's big. I love God, but I'm, I'm a man. I'm worldly. I've got my ancestors, all the stuff they did. But I'm not out to get humanity. And I will not sign on to screwing people over and hurting kids. It's not going to happen, ever. And I really feel sorry for people that are part of this because you've really sold out to some evil stuff. And I'm sad for you. When I really think about people that have sold out to this who, who aren't totally given over to evil, people that are totally given over to it become possessed. I mean, that's what it is. It's just a spirit, a system, a mindset. You, you, your brain just gives over to it. Whatever it is, there ain't nobody home. I mean, something else is there, and it's only there when it, like, comes in, and it's these people. I've talked to top psychiatrists. Whoever the, like, let's get her on like 10 years ago. She's the top lady that's on all the serial killer shows on TV that interviews all the top serial killers. And I heard her on Coast to Coast and got her on here. She's like all the big best-selling books. I forget her name. Like top serial killer doctor, psychiatrist. I think she's an attractive woman or whatever. They'll talk to her. At least she used to be. She's older now. She's still an attractive lady. And she's like, I've never done an interview like this. Absolutely, that's how they are. They glow when they do the crime or when they get into it. But they're like not there when they're not. They're like real scared. And they all think demons are after them. And then and all of a sudden, ah, get a little kid. Ah, and, they're like, ah, and then all of a sudden, they're alive. And they, that's how all of them are, folks. They're demon-possessed. You can be schizophrenic because you got a bunch of chemicals in your brain, lead or mercury poisoning, and, you know, be all crazy and paranoid or whatever. There's a lot of real mental illness out there, but I'm telling you, with these people, these, these, these folks that want to grab little kids and women and stuff, they're, they're like zombies who get possessed by the demon. And I've talked to the top people, not just her, and they said that's exactly what, because I read one of her books, too, and she talked about how they would, like, suddenly, like, the way it's described is, you seen that movie Manchurian Candidate, the remake with Denzel Washington? It's, it's, it's better than the first with uh, Frank Sinatra. And he's like totally bummed out and not there. But, but, but whenever they activate him and give him orders, the whole room blares white. And he's like, oh, yes, now you're ready to take your orders. And that's exactly what it's like as it's been described. And I think I've experienced it a little bit when I was younger. I was like in a fight with like three guys and they were hurting me bad. I was just like kind of black out and I'd just be higher than a kite and everything was like in slow motion. And it's just like, it just, it feels really good. And it's just like, and you're just like, you know, just whatever you do, just you break people. And, but I realized, man, whatever that is, those instincts or whatever that is, I don't like that. Because you know what, it didn't like, whatever that instinct is or whatever you want to call it, didn't like me either. It was like at a different, going into a rage like that, a controlled rage like that, is like going somewhere else. It's like time slows down. And I'm not saying it's the same thing as being a serial killer, but I've, I've experienced altered states, you know, naturally, just, just through uh, stress that I know you got you to experience it. It's, it's rage, just very intense.
of course, I have total control over my temper now, and, and I mean, I always did. I was just, if somebody's, you know, breaking your nose and bashing your head in, you know, you're going you're gonna to flip a switch or you're going to die. That, that's really survival instinct. I think that's something else from what the psychos are in, but it's, it's, I think it's in the same genre, the same spectrum, the same family. But something else directing you. Whether it's genetic, whether it's race memories, whether it's a demon, whether you know something from another dimension, I don't know. But but that's how, as a species, we've always seen it and always discussed it. And there are controlled people who are in a controlled dark rage who want you to drink fluoride, who love the, the pediatric wards full of dying kids uh, with cancer, who love seeing your IQs drop, and who just take a sick pleasure twisting the knife in your leg and pouring salt in it. They got that twinkle in their eyes. It's just like, Ugh. So we don't want to be part of that, do we? No, we don't. Think about honor and goodness in your children and happiness and good things and just exaltation and beauty and just and growing beautiful forests and fields and the stars and the fish in the ocean and just all the magic and the full moon and the sun and, and just, just everything good. And then you go, whoa, yeah, I really don't want to be tempted by that because it's not a temptation at all. But then maybe you feel weak. You don't feel powerful. So you look around for what will make you powerful. And you find things that will make you powerful, but then you lose who you are. So you weren't really powerful, were you? The problem about becoming really discerning, though, is then you're going to care so much, your heart's going to get even bigger, and then you're going to have a lot of pain for others. But I tell you, that pain actually strengths. And that's when the perception and the discernment, the radar, just to politically see through walls, opens up. Because then you step into something bigger. You're an individual, but you have chosen to be a collectivist, not in the organized governmental false collectivist view, but in a true collectivist view, in that you are an individual. But you've transcended that into the body of the species, and only then do you access everything before, currently, and into the future. And then you're truly alive. And our enemies can see before them and in the present, and they can imagine a future, but they don't see the future because they're not in that stream of time, space, continuum, and the will of God. They have stepped out of it in artificiality to try to take everything and the systems they've been given and twist it to their own will instead of submitting to the will of God. And that is the big secret. I want to go to some of your phone calls. we got guests coming up. Uh, Chris in, in Utah said, Holes, I wanted to finish up with him, and I'm going to definitely get to Bobby. Bobby, I sell propane and propane access. Dad, what are those? Son, they're called hippies. All right, <laughs> I'm off the rails here for just a minute. Uh, Mark in Arizona. We'll get to everybody. We have to go to the next hour a little bit. David Knight's coming up. But just to stop right there, um, I'm not going to belabor it. X2 is excellent. Survival Shield X2. It's the good halogen. Everyone should be on it. Consult your physician before you do. You die without good iodine. And, and, and there's really not a lot of good sources of it. The food's depleted. The soils are depleted. It's changed my life. It's amazing. It's hiding in plain view. 20% off on X2 right now. We have the vitamin mineral fusion of fruit punch with all the amino acids and more. Great way to just you know, have a glass of that each day. I don't like it at its full strength. I think it tastes a little too strong. I mean, it's vitamin minerally. Uh, it's like beyond tangy tangerine. Tastes okay. It doesn't taste great. Just like this doesn't taste wonderful because it's real vitamins and minerals. But, but uh, if, if, if I do it lighter, I actually like the taste. I kind of like the taste of, I like the old Beyond Tangy Tangerine. It's actually, we sold that at InfoWarsHealth.com. I like the new one too, but I think, I think the old Beyond tastes the best. This tastes the second best. And then the peach 2.0, I know it's a better formula, but I don't like it as much. But it's all excellent. Whatever you like, whatever floats your boat, InfoWarsHealth.com uh, for the longevity products and your purchase helps fund our operation. InfoWarsLife.com for our new um, product that's excellent. And that is the vitamin mineral fusion in InfoWarsLife.com. Free shipping on orders of $50 or more. 10% off when you sign up for auto ship. All of their specials running right now. Please take advantage of that today. And we, uh, we're going to send the email out one more time this afternoon, and that's it. 50% off the Hillary for Prison and the Come and Take It shirt. You can buy either or both. 50% off with the promo code when you sign up for our free newsletter, InfoWars.com forward slash newsletter. Okay, uh, Chris in Utah, you're making some good points, and that's my real only fear about Trump is that, 
Jesse Ventura goes in. They go, sir, they want to meet with you in the bottom of the Capitol. Who? He goes, uh, federal government. He goes in, there's like 30 CIA people there trying to boss him around. And he didn't really go with what they wanted to, so they just came after him. Well, you give orders, then people just don't follow your orders. And they go, we thought you meant it this way. Or, well, it's written in an actual legislation. Well, we're going to try to circumvent it. The bureaucracy takes it away from you. And they follow their own agenda. Uh, and so, yeah, I don't think Trump's a panacea. Just like Ron Paul said, I'm not going to be a dictator. I can't fix everything. They can be a bully pulpit, though, to promote nationalism, free speech, and change things. But I think Trump is a manifestation of massive populism. And that's why it's positive. But uh, I don't think he's a conscious shill. But I, there are some pitfalls. Uh, but look, Bernie Sanders or Hillary, I'm going with Trump. Uh, it's not a lesser two evils issue. It's just there it is. Uh, but Chris, I mean, what do you say? He's consciously bad or you think he'll just be compromised? What do you think? You know, Alex, uh, that's completely and totally irrelevant. I don't know what he thinks or knows. I do know this, that they're keeping this economy limping along, and it's all they can do to keep that economy going. Eventually it will collapse, and I think they would rather have an overtly capitalist president at the helm and a, a majority Republican Congress as well. The media is going to have a field day with that combination. They're going to blame, you know, the president always. No, I hear you. That's been my biggest concern is the public is so dumb. They bring ISIS in, they attack, and they blame conservatives when Obama brought them in. The public, not, uh, common sense has been suspended. So, yeah, if Trump gets in and one weekend they claim the world was so scared, the economy tanked, but we've got to be smart enough to know they were already planning that. I mean, it, 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 justice be done by the heavens fall. Go ahead. But you see, I've been saying this for the last seven years, Alex. I've seen this because I know how these people think. When you think they're going to zig, they zag, and vice versa. Uh, they want you to think. They want us to think that there's there's hope for the future. There's hope for the rest. Do you think? Do you think Trump think knows? Okay, well, let's say you're right. Do you think Trump knows he's a shill? You know what? I I don't know. I'm going to plead ignorance on that because I don't. I don't. I really don't know. But it doesn't matter. They can control him, just like you Well, said. here's the deal. The globalists aren't invincible. They're not God. And I'm going with Trump. But I am taking what you said on consideration. I'm Alex Jones. Stay with us. The Global Transmission and Hour 4. Straight ahead. Stay with us. Uh, I'm going to do one more segment in the next hour and go to John in Canada, Mark in Arizona, and others. Tom in Canada. A bunch of calls from Canada. And then David Knight's taking over. But right now, let's go here from the... War Room, we've got the radio original studio we call the Situation Room, so I can cut to other reporters and breaking news. Uh, but we now have the uh, new, what will we call this, the command base or, or, or the lair of McAdoo, or do we call it the TV studio? Because uh, really, this is a TV studio, too. But it's good to have these so we can just always have folks working, doing more. We're going to try to do some radio news down the road. We're doing a lot of stuff, obviously, uh, here with the great network. Uh, GCNlive.com, the folks over there in Minnesota. We're down here in Austin, Texas. So let's go now. I now take you back to Austin, Texas, uh, about 60, 70 yards from where I sit through that wall uh, to Leanne McAdoo and Marley Jones, the lovely Marley Jones. I can say that <laughs> she's my sister. And I uh, look so cute <laughs> over there. And uh, she's, she's like 28, but she's always my baby sister. I'm a squeezer. <laughs> Anyways, a lot of employees around that didn't know Marley. I'll, I'll call her over and like, kiss her. And they're like, what are you doing kissing this employee? I'm kissing her. <laughs> hey, but seriously, Marley, uh, uh, Leanne, tell us what we got, who the winner is. I want you to choose who the winner is of the Instagram contest at uh, real underscore Alex Jones. Okay, well, we have been tallying up the votes for the last uh, couple of hours during the show, and a lot of people have been taking the poll. So I'm viewing the results right now, making sure they're the most updated. And it looks like with 298 votes, Makeda, or Makata, is going to be the winner. Makata. So congratulations. <laughs> Sorry if I'm your name wrong. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we have a winner of the thousand dollars. She'll be the young lady wearing the Hillary for Prison T-shirt. There. Can we put and her on screen? The big winner. There you go. She's the winner. She got the most votes. That's awesome. Hillary for Prison 2016. The shirts are available 50% off today, and then it is over at InfoWarsStore.com. When you sign up for the free email, you we will send you the promo code. To get 50% off that. And 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 again. We have millions of followers on Facebook and so much more. We, we only have, I don't know, 40,000 or whatever it is on Instagram. We need people to follow it. So it's another avenue to reach out to people. We need to grow that. So please follow us there. Uh, just like, you know, we have a few hundred <laughs> votes here. We just posted this today just as a fun idea. You know, when we have our own poll on InfoWars, it gets like 40,000 votes. Drudge gets like a million votes. So we need to really get folks to vote more in these because it's all part of, you know, people being involved and, and basically giving us your feedback and your views. So thank you for voting. Those that did, we're going to have more and more of these contests. 
Uh, Leanne, Marley, uh, Marley was a little nervous there. Uh, just jump in any time. Go ahead. I mean, overall, very successful contest. It's great to see Info Warriors out there. Yeah, I could not believe the amount of people that were using the InfoWars gear hashtag. There were so many people, thousands of people. Yeah, it was definitely really great to see all the activity. And I just want to let you know you can keep using that hashtag. We want to keep looking at all your photos. We want to keep seeing your support. We're going to use those on our newsletter, on our website. So anytime you see anything that shows you're active in the community, hashtag it InfoWars gear. We're going to be looking at it every single day. We just want to give you guys a way to show like what you're doing and make sure your voice is heard and that you're sharing it with your friends and talking about it. So keep going on it. And you're building the, the community of info warriors out there. So it's great. Next, we'll get you on Snapchat, Alex. I think you'll <laughs> love that. Hey, you ladies are just doing a great job over there. <laughs> oh, thanks. Well, thank you. What do you think of the new studio, Leanne? I like it. Uh, everyone compliments this this new studio. It's, it's very large. I think it's going to be excellent when we get all of us here. You know, well, that's really it. We have all these reporters and guests. We're like, we're doing election <laughs> coverage and things. We can have a couple people in here, and then a couple right. in there, and then that way people get breaks. People say, well, I have a bunch of studios. Well, that's why Fox and CNN do that, too. You can, like, get up, go get more yeah. stuff, stuff ready, come back, have a break, and go boom, boom, boom. And it's, it's awesome. Just boom, boom, boom. Bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <laughs> all right, great job, folks, and congratulations to the winner. Great job, ladies. Congratulations. Uh, you bet. Uh, we'll be back in 70 seconds of the fourth hour with your phone calls, and David Knight is getting warmed up in the bullpen. I'm this Alex Jones. So these calls fast rate everybody in. Mark in Arizona, you're on the air. Thanks for calling in. Hey, thank you, Alex. Your uh, products are top notch. I'm so glad you guys are touching on Soros. I mean, uh, even on the Wikipedia page, I forced myself to watch seven hours of his open borders lectures. We just stood at a podium and just lectured on and on and on about how democracy has to be tested and no government is viable and it needs just be run by one person i mean that's all i got oh my god that, 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 exactly the davos forum is like bilderberg in public now the most outrageous evil stuff we need 100 trillion every decade in the first 10 years and then 200 trillion the next given to private interests to who know how to run things best it's like he wants 100 trillion taxpayer money i mean what a pig I know, imagine I thought, how I entitled he feels though he was a Nazi collaborator when he was 14, 15, 16, ferreting and rounding up thousands of people to their deaths. And now he runs everything and just, just gets away with it and has all these fawning leftists worshiping him. Yeah, disgusting. And now with this pedophile stuff that's coming out, you know, I mean, at every corner. I grew up in Hollywood, and, I mean, that was the underlying joke. You know, I had uh, best friends that were actors, and, you know, all of a sudden they were gone you know, from one day to the next. And so I just, I just can't, I'm sickened by what's going on. Mark, God bless you. Thanks for the call. Great point. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to, just been holding the longest here, Tom in Canada. Thank you for holding her on the air. Then Bobby. Hey, Alex. Welcome. Hey, what an honor. Can I uh, join you in a war card to start this off? Bobby, I think that's something you need to do. Ah! <laughs> Can we come in actually in the next segment with uh, the uh, the uh, Mike Judge intro? What's on your mind, real quick, brother from Canada? So I'm just really sick of the lies of the New World Order, Alex. And I've been uh, listening to a podcast uh, deep inside the rabbit hole. And so I just want to read you a quote from Edward Bernays' book, uh, Crystallizing Public Opinion. Yes. It's, uh, page 89. Uh, the group and herd says, uh, Not so long ago, every intelligent man knew the world was flat. Today, the average man has a belief just as firm and unknowing in the, in the mysterious force, which he has heard called atomic energy. So my question is, is um, NASA recently released uh, images? Sorry, he was being sarcastic. He meant they were wrong before, but now they know about atomic energy. It's tongue in cheek. Yes, I've read the book. He says every intelligent man knew. He says now the average Which he man means has they, they were ignorant but thought they were intelligent. We can change public view. Now they know there's invisible atomics. Yeah, I know there are people who say atomic bombs don't exist. We can't leave the Earth and we don't have space travel and the Earth's flat. It is the biggest load of horse crap ever. But I get people don't trust the system so much. I appreciate your call. We can have a whole flat Earth discussion. They'll say that I'm endorsing it. No, I'm not. All right. I, I just don't have time for it. I'm, I'm hurrying. I'm sorry. Uh, let's go. It's been holding longest after that. Dennis in Virginia. May not get to the others. Sorry. Go ahead, Dennis. Yes, uh, Alex. Um, I'm 
addressing a specific point that uh, you raised uh, during your discussion with Manson and even before about the about the Pope. And uh, you obviously feel the Pope is associated with ISIS, which I agree. But um, did you know that the Pope reports to another Pope? I mean, I know that once you're a Jesuit, supposedly whoever the top Jesuit is, he reports to the black Pope. Yes, uh, they claim that. So that's what I mean. It's not even a Pope. You're not supposed to have a Jesuit as a Pope because it's supposedly this police force and it's supposed to be separate. And then, and then it just goes on and on. All I know is the guy... The guy is completely transparent. I mean, I'm wondering what comes next, you know. Well, the main thing is that, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've followed you for years and years and given out many of your, your videos and tapes for 10 years at least. And you have had people on like Fritz Springmeier. And uh, you haven't had on F. Tupper Saucy, but uh, he has a book called Rulers of Evil. I recommend you read that book. But... Um, I would, I would think that you would want to explore about the black pope. In his I control. will. Let, 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 I mean, listen, this pope's so obviously evil, I, I'm, I'm going after him. So, yeah. This was the 115th anniversary of the first speed limits enacted by law that happened this last Saturday. That was the anniversary. You know, we look back at speed limits and what's happened in the last 115 years. We've seen them used by the federal government as an instrument of control taking over our interstate system, saying, you know, we put these interstate systems out here, and uh, we can tell you what the speed limit is going to be, and you're going to extend that everywhere else, or we're going to cut your subsidies. So they take our money, and then they bribe us with the money that we send in. They bribe us with our own money. We're going to be talking in this hour, at the bottom of the hour, we're going to be talking to an author, Matt McKinley, who's written a book of fiction called Texas Shrugged. You know, kind of like Atlas Shrugged. We're going to talk about the ideas of uh, Texas leaving the Union. You know, we've talked about the Britain exit, Britain leaving the EU. We gave eight reasons that were put out there by the London mayor, Boris Johnson, as to why Britain would be better off outside of the EU. And every one of those reasons are reasons that any state, but especially Texas, pretty much, uh, there's some states that get a lot of money from the federal government in terms of subsidies, like South Carolina, but Texas is not one of those. And we'd be better off even if it made us poor, it wouldn't make us poor, but we would be far better off because we wouldn't have the government manipulating us like they do. And of course, what we see happening in the bathrooms today with Obama, the Department of Education saying they're going to withdraw some grant money from all the different states if we don't implement their bathroom regulations. This is a problem that did not exist. This is a problem that they're creating, a problem that they're using as an instrument of social control. Saying that if you don't let boys into the girls' bathrooms and showers, then we're going to take away the lunch money for the poor children. That's what we see from the federal government. That's what we've seen on the highways. And let me tell you something. If you want to cripple a country, you control their transportation. Remember that the interstate system itself was a military idea. It was something that Eisenhower put in. He tried to move, and he wrote a small book about it, he tried to move a military convoy in the Northeast, and he talked about how difficult it was to get it from one point to the other. Then when World War II happened, and they saw the German Autobahn, which was built by Hitler in order to let the military move quickly from one side of the country to the other, he said, ah, we need that. So it was fundamentally a military operation. And controlling transportation is fundamentally a military idea. If you're going to take over a country, take over a population and control them, what are you going to do? You're going to shut down their transportation. So we see a story like this, the passing of the horse. This was on Road and Track this last weekend, talking about the 115th anniversary. And if you think that it's only speed limits, look at some of the things that were proposed in the early years of the horseless carriage. They say in 1894, Vermont implemented their imitation of Great Britain's Red Flag Act where all motor carriages required a little man, I, I guess it had to be a little man, <laughs> a little man to walk in front, waving a red flag to ensure that madness and mayhem would never befall bystanders. And allegedly, Pennsylvania nearly passed a law requiring motorists, whenever they would encounter errant livestock, to come to a complete stop, then completely disassemble their cars and hide the parts behind nearby bushes. That bill was fortunately vetoed by the governor. Now, what they did in Connecticut, where they passed the first speed limit in 1901, they restricted cars to 12 miles an hour in the city, 15 in the countryside. That's probably about the speed at which a Google car drives today. 
And if you think that they're not going to do this, if you think they're not going to get totally crazy, just look at this story out of South Carolina. Mother lets her son drive a golf cart at a resort and gets jailed for child abuse. Now... This kid was 11 years old. This is at the luxury resort, Bald Head Island in South Carolina. Her 11-year-old son asked if he could drive the golf cart back to their $1,000 a day rented cottage. It was dusk. There was no traffic on the path. And his father would be sitting next to him in this dangerous golf cart. Because, you know, even a golf cart needs to have a computer driving it for our safety. And they say in the next four hours... The mother says she was pinned to the ground by police, repeatedly accused of being drunk. She was then frog-marched barefoot aboard a ferry in handcuffs and jailed in leg irons and charged with child abuse. Now, we're not going to go into all the details of everything that happened here. Interestingly enough, they say on this island where they have replaced cars with golf carts, you have to be 16, you have to have a valid driver's license to drive a golf cart on Bald Head Island. They say there's been fatal accidents there from people who fell out of carts. Really? You know, I just look at that and it's like, give me a break. You know, people die in bathrooms falling out, of, you know, falling in their tubs more than just about anywhere else. Do we need to have a license to take a bath? Do we need bathroom inspectors? Do we need permission? Is it child abuse to bathe your child in a bathtub? Because, you know, people die in the bathrooms. And so I guess we need to have... Big brother, big nanny state, and there, this is the insanity. And when I looked at this, I remember my dad telling me that he was driving cars when he was eight years old. They didn't have driver's licenses back then, or if they did, they didn't pay attention to them. <laughs> um, and when we were in Virginia, when I went there with uh, Joe Biggs and we were looking at a, a shooting incident that had happened there, we tried to rent a boat and we were told that you had to have a license to drive a low-power motorboat in Virginia. But, of course, they had grandfathered this in. If you were born, if you were old enough that you were maybe in your mid-50s or older, like me, they grandfathered it in, literally, because they knew that people our age have been driving boats for a long time without a license, and we're not going to put up with this BS. And it is total BS. Where is this headed? Look at this article. This is uh, via Drudge Report, uh, Breitbart. Uber's CEO wants to fix your commute. Now, when he's talking about fixing your commute, what you need to understand is he's really talking about fixing the market with crony capitalism. This is Uber's founder. He called on local regulators. He's in Europe. Called on local regulators in Europe to promote the financial incentives car owners could benefit from if they were to pick up a neighbor and share their ride to work. He met with regulators at the European Commission earlier in the day to talk about how cities can solve problems like traffic parking and having too many cars on the road. You know, cars that don't belong to him. Because he's going to be the person who is Uber all A's transportation. He's going to own all the cars. He's going to control all the cars. He is preaching to the choir. The government has always wanted to get us out of our cars. They want to eliminate private transportation. They want to control all movement. And now they have, through this new technology, the means on which they're going to do this. And what you're seeing here is a massive alignment of a few me multinational mega corporations. And a kind of crony capitalist play where they're going to control transportation. They're going to own every single car because it's not just giving you a financial incentive. They're going to give you massive disincentives. They're going to come in with regulations that are as oppressive and as crazy as some of the stuff that was proposed in 115 years ago as cars were first coming out. They're going to put you out of your car. And look at what's happening here. We're, we're, they're told... They're going to do this to make the roads safer. And yet, as we try to do that at the local level, at the state level, what do they do? These crony capitalist com companies like Lyft and uh, General Motors get together, set up their, uh, their partnership that they're going to uh, put in San Francisco. But we now have a, an official global lobbying group that is composed of Ford, Volvo, uh, Uber, Lyft, and Google. And they are going to the federal government, they're going to the European Union, and they're saying we're going to shut down any concerns about safety regulations that are enacted at the local level or at the state level or at the national level. They keep going to a higher level. We've seen this happen with food safety 
And one of the ways that they do this to get rid of local opposition is to offer them giant grants. That's the way they control us, isn't it? We see Denver is now making a pitch to a transportation secretary so they can win a $50 million grant. It's part of their ego to say, we are a high-tech city. Look at us. We're the first ones to have a self-driving network here, but we can also get $50 million grant from the Federal Department of Transportation. What is this fundamentally about? It's about controlling your movement. It's also about surveillance. Remember, Drudge Report, the end of last week, had this Wired article up. New surveillance system may let cops use all of the cameras. They point out there's 30 million or so surveillance cameras that are peering into nearly every corner of the lives of Americans. They say it might freak you out, and you tell yourself, oh, no one could access all of that. But now computer scientists, of course, you, they can. Okay, there's not going to be any limits on that. The government has multiple agencies that can go in and hack that. That's what they exist for. That's their primary mission is to spy on American citizens. And, of course, there are individuals, malevolent individuals and other governments who want to do that as well. Computer scientists have created a way of letting law enforcement tap any camera that isn't password protected. What do you think is going to happen to the cameras, to the black boxes that they are going to be mandating towards the end of this year to put into your cars? What's going to happen with all that data? Remember when we talked about Jade Helm, the issue was mastering the human domain. Now, everybody got excited about whether or not there are going to be troops on the ground. But we talked about what was really fundamentally at issue here. Geospatial intelligence. That has been the fastest growing division of espionage that our federal government has been working on the last 15 years. James Clapper has been at the forefront of geospatial intelligence. What do they do with that? They look at your activity, activity-based intelligence. They map that geographically. And that's their human domain analytics. Put that together and they give the speeches at these geospatial intelligence conferences talking about mastering the human domain before they used it as a subtitle for that. That's what it's really about. It's about the data. And the data is the tool for military control. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight on this Monday, May 23rd, 2016. In the next segment, we're going to be talking to the author of a fiction book called Texas Shrug as an Atlas shrug, but about Texas independence. I think it's going to be very interesting. I think it'll be a fun conversation. I want to talk about what's going on in California. There is a sweep of 11 fast-tracked anti-gun bills coming up in California. Guns.com has called it the gun apocalypse. Uh, I'll tell you what's going to be happening. They're also going to talk about Tom Brokow coming after guns at a commencement address at the University of Mississippi in just a moment. Before we do, I want to let you know that we have a sale that we've extended for Survival Shield X2 nascent iodine, 20% off. That's 20% off our nascent iodine, Survival Shield X2 at InfoWarsLife.com for limited time only. There's no question we've reached a tipping point on a global scale now more than ever. It's time to prepare your family with things like water, food, heirloom seeds, and our flagship formula, Survival Shield X2, nascent iodine. So for limited time, we have 20% off of that. Also, if you want to sign up for our free InfoWars newsletter at InfoWars.com forward slash newsletter, you will get not only 50% uh, off Hillary for prison t-shirts and come and take it t-shirts, but you will also get specials sent to you on an ongoing basis as well as unique content that only comes out on the InfoWars newsletter. Again, that's a free email newsletter. If you sign up for that, you'll get 50% off our two best-selling t-shirts, Hillary for prison t-shirt and the come and take it t-shirt. You can do that at InfoWars.com forward slash newsletter and uh, you'll see these promo codes uh, that you can use to sign up for that. All right, now what's going on in California? We've got a situation here where you've got a couple of Democrats, one who is the uh, uh, president pro tem of the Senate, another one who is a lieutenant governor who both want to run for governor. They're competing with each other to see who can do the most abridgment of our fundamental rights to protect ourselves in California. And this has been called, these are 11 different gun regulations, as uh, guns.com has called it, the gun apocalypse. They say that they all passed the Senate last week. And they're now going to be coming up to the General Assembly. Now, Firearms Policy Coalition says it is nothing short of unconscionable that min millions of law-abiding Californians are being used as chess pieces in a twisted political game to see who can race to the bottom first. And let me give you an example of what some of these 
regulations are. They say the measures include things like restrictions, mandatory registration on ghost guns, you know, retroactive bans on currently grandfathered firearms and magazines going back to 1899. So all of your classic uh, guns are going to get everything, folks. Outlawing the use of bullet buttons. I'll tell you about that in just a moment. I had to look that up. Founding a state-run firearm violence research center to study gun deaths and to generate lies about gun statistics as a health care issue. They'll mark all gun theft a felony offense. They'll criminalize loans of guns between friends and requiring the reporting of stolen guns. Finally, three bills in the package would change how California defines ammunition and they would mandate background checks for ammunition purchases as well as collect and save sales tax information. So folks in California, you're about to lose every single bit of your gun rights by infringement. And when we look at things like bullet buttons, I had to look this up, and it's like, what is this? California put regulations in to make it difficult to remove spent magazines. You know, you have interchangeable magazines and things like AR-15s. You can't pull those things out and put another one in unless you've got a special tool. So people came up with these bullet buttons as a workaround. And I've got to say that if you think that you're going to regulate this stuff out of business... Wait until you do full gun prohibition, California, and the rest of the United States. If Hillary wins, if these people in California win, and you go into full gun prohibition, you're going to see not things as simple as bullet buttons. You're going to see an explosion in technology. That always happens. It happened with alcohol. It happened with the prohibition of all kinds of drugs. You get more virulent forms of whatever it is that you don't like, that you think is too dangerous for people to have. So you wind up with things like meth, or you wind up with things like bathtub gin, or you change the consumption from primarily being beer before alcohol prohibition to hard liquor. You're going to get more of what you don't like. You're going to get it in a totally unregulated Wild West scenario. So you want to do this? Bring it on, folks. You're going to see something really ramp up here, but it's going to be very violent on our streets because right now, People are shooting each other over drug prohibition. That's where most of this crime is happening. Wait until the weapons themselves start to become an object of innovation. Then we have Tom Brokaw. These type of people used to be the only sources of news. Let's play this clip from Tom Brokaw. Wait, let's wait until we come back from a break. You won't believe what he has to say. He says, more guns, more firearm tolerance will mean more homegrown acts of terror. That's it. If you own a gun, you're a terrorist, according to the guy who used to be one-third of the news nationwide, Tom Brokaw. We'll play that clip for you when we come back. You won't believe it. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and we're going to be talking to the author of Texas Shrugged, Matt McKinley, in just a moment. Before we do, I want to uh, play this clip from Tom Brokaw. As I point out, remember, this is the guy who used to have, uh, what do you call it? You've got a monopoly, you got a duopoly. What do you have it? I call it when you've got three networks that control all your information. Uh, I guess you can call it uh, tri-tyranny or something. I don't know. But let's listen to the guy who used to be one of the big three newscasters talk about guns at the University of Missouri commencement address. And, of course, it's, they've now become political platforms for people like this to pontificate about their liberal views. Listen to what he has to say about firearms. I'm sports shooting. But I am appalled by the determination of organizations and individuals to arm more people without any appreciation of the consequence of ever more lethal weapons in our midst. More guns and more firearm tolerance will mean more homegrown acts of terror. Yes, we have a constitutional right to own guns. I believe strongly in the Second Amendment. But with that right comes the personal obligation to be on guard against the promiscuous use of guns, not to pretend that no limits means no trouble. There you go. We have to guard against the promiscuous use of guns. See, if you carry a gun openly and you're not wearing a uniform, that is promiscuous is dangerous. No matter what our government does, no matter how much the federal government militarizes and federalizes our police. That's not a problem for people like Tom Brokaw because, you know, you and I can use it for sports. It's for hunting. It's not as a check against government abuse of power. No, 
The Second Amendment says that's what it truly is about. And what he wants to do is he wants to change your rights. He says, oh, I agree with the Second Amendment rights. No, he wants to change your rights into a government-granted privilege. And all we have to do is look at what's happening in California. They are prescribing that to the extent that they're essentially shutting it down. They don't want anybody but the government to own guns, and we know where that leads. He says, uh, it said in 2013, it was a far-reaching claim for gun owners to say that firearms are necessary for protection against a tyrannical government. Well, he has an argument with the founders of this country. He has an argument with history. Because we can show you over and over again, the first move of tyrants is to confiscate the guns. And when I look at the ridiculous issues that are being brought up in these commencement addresses... I saw this story from back in North Carolina, close to where we used to live. North Carolina high schools in Wake County are now getting rid of the idea that you would have a valedictorian and a salutatorian. Okay, those aren't inclusive enough. So we don't want to have any kind of meritocracy in America. No, we have to get rid of that. We have to dumb everybody down. We have to have not only a common core, but we have to have common results. This is a unanimous decision from the school board there in Wake County to not honor the people who are the first and second in their class in terms of grades. Because, you know, this is like Wobegon, where all the kids are above average. Disgusting. All right. Now, I've given you a lot of reasons why we need to get out of the federal government. We need to stop their control, their social engineering of everything that's going on in our country. We talked about this last week. We talked about the eight reasons that Boris Johnson, mayor of London, gave for Britain to leave the EU. Every one of those reasons is intensified in the case of Texas, for example. He said, oh, they're giving us 2,500 regulations a year. We get 80,000 pages of regulations a year from the federal bureaucracy as American citizens. Everything that happens in Britain in terms of the net amount of money that they send into the European Union is greater when you look at what happens with Texas, for example. We would be better off. We would have that money to spend for ourselves. We would set up what our priorities are. And I think it's interesting when we look at the pushback that some of the liberal media has come out with. We saw this uh, back in 2012. The Dallas Morning News said Texas can no longer complain that it gives more than it gets from the federal government. And they say, well, that was true for decades. That Texas received only 90 cents or less for every dollar that residents and businesses sent to Washington. But that's no longer the case. Why is that no longer the case? Well, demographic shifts and a surge in military spending in Texas had us cross the break-even line, according to them. Well, I have figures that show otherwise. But nevertheless, is that really a reason to stay in? See, so what's happening with that demographic shift is the open borders. They're bringing in people, they're putting them on the welfare rolls, and they're paying them more on the welfare rolls than they pay our retired citizens who have paid into Social Security their entire working life. 15%, 15.62% of their gross wages go into Social Security. Yet those people are getting thousands of dollars less per year than people who are on welfare. And the government is bringing them in, mandating that we have absolutely no control of our borders, telling us what benefits have to be given to people, Dictating that and then saying, but look at how much money we're giving you. That's the way they blackmail us. And, of course, the more the federal government puts in terms of TSA agents or BLM agents, well, that's a benefit. Look, we're creating jobs in Texas. <laughs> They've created swarms of officers to harass our people and eat out their substance. And then they say that is a net economic benefit for us. I don't think so. So we're talking to our author here who has a book called uh, Texas Shrugged, has a great cover. It looks like the cover that you typically see of Atlas Shrugged, except the guy in gold is not holding up the world. He's holding up the United States. He's got a cowboy hat. He's got cowboy boots on. And his shoulder is right there where Texas is. Clear analogy to that. Uh, he's author of several books, Texas Shrugged, Quantum of Conscience. He says it's not political, but it's about time travel. Also another book called The Right Can't Win. We'll talk to him about that as well. The premise of the book, Texas Shrugged, according to the um, summary here, is even today certain heirs of the founding fathers carry secret instructions passed down through the generations. The heir of George Washington combines the governor of Texas to restore the Constitution by peacefully seceding from the United States. Of course, Obama reacts unfavorably. Is peaceful succession possible? Yes. And he says it's the only way to win. So joining us now is Matt McKinley. Welcome, Matt. Thanks, David. Glad to be here. Great premise for your book. Uh, tell us a little bit about it. 
Sure. Just like you said, it is Texas secession. It's fiction. However, it's a peaceful secession. And people say to me, well, how's that possible? And I say, well, think it through. What are you going to take up daggers and knives and pitchforks and torches and your shotguns and storm across the Oklahoma border? Impossible. The only way to do it, and I had to figure this out to make the book, of course, believable. I war gamed how this would happen if it really would ever happen is you would have to do it peacefully. You would have to basically do um, a flash mob, for example, where four or five million people stand up all at once and say, we've had enough. We've had enough of this system. We've had enough of the never-ending money printing, the QE, the never-ending debt, laws, rules, regulations, ordinance, executive orders. We've had enough. So in the book, a, uh, an heir of the founding fathers, in this case, George Washington, a descendant of George Washington, and the book, the premises, they do exist. There are reasons why these people stay in the shadows, and that's we could debate that some other time. But that person combines with a fictitious governor of Texas. They go before the Alamo, and they announce to the world, we are out of this government. Of course, they, they play it up that there's going to be a big announcement, but nobody really knows what's coming. I think in the book, Obama is uh, playing a game of pool. And the governor of Texas announces a session. He said, what did he say? The governor's <laughs> name is Joe Tanner in the book. <laughs> That's great. You know, when I look at this, uh, you, you talk about how it might be a flash mob or something like that. I suggested that perhaps as Britain is having a, uh, an election, uh, they call it the Brexit, to see whether or not they should leave the European Union. We ought to try to have some kind of a referendum like that to see whether or not Texas should leave uh, the union. I'm, I know that the Republican establishment would not like that because they very much like to be players in Washington, don't they? <laughs> yeah, they, I don't think there is a two, really two parties anymore. I mean, no. they're taking their cloaks off and we see who really is in this one party system. And yeah, there should be a referendum. And I think there was actually they after the two, what, what inspired me to write the book was right around 2012. Remember, people came out and said, if Obama's elected again, we're going to move to Canada. Texas is going to secede. Well, nobody ended up moving to Canada, but they did start a White House petition. Of course, I don't think that White House petition and it did get the, the required number of signatures or online votes, they never responded to it. But they did respond to the White House. I think they have their own um, recipe on how to brew beer, and they did respond to that. That's really important. <laughs> yeah, I signed that petition. Uh, you know, I'm for secession because I'm for local government. I'm for the government that is the closest to me. The government that is the most easily controlled. I think that when we look at uh, historically, I, I was for Scotland leaving uh, Britain, for Britain leaving the EU. I was for the Ukraine leaving Russia, for the Crimea leaving the Ukraine. And it's interesting when you look at these cases, the very people in our State Department and our news media, they were all for Ukraine leaving Russia, but then they opposed the idea that Crimea would leave the Ukraine. And it's like, really? <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, you know, they, they can't be consistent about any of this. And they will not support the idea of local governments, governance. And you see this happening all across Europe as well, because people understand that globalism is determined to erase national sovereignty. And it is a consolidation of power. That is what the founders of this country feared more than anything, was a consolidation of power. That's why they divided power in Washington with the Constitution. And they divided power between Washington and the states who had created that. And now... Over these, over these centuries, we've seen that gradually erased, and now we're in a race to get rid of even the national boundaries to create a global governance. That's what these trade deals are all about. Yeah, they've totally done away with the Ninth and Tenth Amendment. Totally yes. done away. The Constitution is clear. It gives the federal government a short list, a short list of what they can do. And it says if it's not on this list, you may not do it. Well, since 1776 or 1791, when the Constitution was ratified, they've added tens of thousands of things onto that list. The founding fathers would be turning over in their graves today. You know, there was an interesting article that came out this weekend from the Washington Post. It was uh, on Drudge Report talking about these Americans are preparing for battle against their own government. And they talked about a very responsible person, B.J. Soper. They tried to make him look like a radical out in Oregon. But these are guys who've organized together. They prepare together for any kind of a natural disaster. They are uh, taking they're, they're working as responsible citizens in their community, helping people cleaning up highways, doing these types of things. And yet they go to the Southern Poverty Law Center to try to make them look like they're radicals. But I think one of the interesting things that we see as this rises up is that we need to find ways that we can work together locally in our community. And I think uh, a key thing 
is to realize that it isn't inevitable that we would have self-governance again, that we would have some say in our local government. That is the key thing about it. And as part of this article, they had a back and forth. They had a very short uh, clip, about a minute each. They had this guy that they talked to, B.J. Soper. He talked about the land issues, and he read from the Constitution. And then they went to a constitutional professor, they said, a law professor. And he said, well, you know, it, it, words don't really mean the same thing they did 200 years ago. And it's like, really? What words would those be? Uh, Ten square miles, uh, forts and ports, those don't mean the same thing that they did, you know, uh, 250 years ago. Whatever you believe the Commerce Clause is or whatever you believe and twist the Welfare Clause or in the particular case of this law professor's answer, he was primed by the Washington Post to talk about the Sweeper Clause. All of those clauses are superseded by the Ninth and Tenth Amendment, and they are very concise, very clear. And the reason they're there is because people were worried that uh, they might use the Constitution to expand and to concentrate power at the federal government. Yeah, if I could bring the book back into it just for a moment. Sure. One of the things that the, the heir of George Washington does is, in fact, it turns out that the Bill of Rights is nothing, is, to, to him and to the family, is a gauge to see how many how many rights can be or will be violated by this government. And that's what he takes to the governor of Texas. And he says, let me, let me make the case. Every single one of the Bill of Rights has been violated or at least infringed upon by this government as of 2016. And that even includes Amendment 3. Jade Helm infringed upon the amendment that thought no one will ever, you know, this is never going to be an issue to have troops quartering in your home. As ridiculous as that seems today, that actually happened in Jade Helm, where certain ranchers were asked to put up troops on their property. I would say, Matt, that the Third Amendment, having troops quartered in your home, could be applied to the NSA setting up espionage on your computers. They're literally sucking down the bandwidth that you're paying for, wherever your internet provider is, but they're literally living in your home, watching everything you do. You probably have less privacy with your computer and with the devices and the internet of things that you have in your house. As that increases, you probably have less privacy than somebody did at the colonial times that literally had troops living within their home. And so I think, yeah, every one of these things has been violated. That's a that's a really clever idea to use the the uh, Bill of Rights as a gauge. I, I think we're down at zero now in terms yeah, we're, of any we're of those zero, being but That's in interesting. Fact. I never thought about that. That you could you could interpret a, another violation of the Third Amendment as the NSA on your internet lines. Very interesting. Let's talk a little bit about your other book, uh, The Right Can't Win. Tell us the premise of that premise of that, I just racked my brain for years thinking, how did we get to the state of affairs we are in this country? Endless laws, rules, regulations, ordinance, executive orders. What is it? Uh, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of laws written across millions of pages of legalese. Let me repeat that to the audience. Millions of pages, and they say ignorance of the law is no excuse. Well, they add 80,000 every year, and these are added. You know, we, we talked about taxation without representation. Today we have legislation without representation. These people who are writing these rules, these bureaucrats, they have a vested interest in creating these rules. There's absolutely no restraint on them. They don't have to have reasonable fines. They create the law. They uh, enforce the law, and they create the penalties for these laws. And there is no presumption of innocence, and there is no representation of us in Washington. It's absolute tyranny, and it's 80,000 pages a year. Yeah, I don't even think Congress doesn't pay attention anymore, whether we could debate if Congress, they're puppets or they're real. We could debate that some other time. Mm -hmm. But the fact is they don't pay attention anymore because there's so many bureaucracies, so much administration. Generally, whatever they did in the past has been taken out of their hands. Absolutely. Yeah, we've got to come up to uh, a break shortly. But but give us a real quick breakdown, kind of a tease about your other book, uh, The uh, Right Can't Win. Yeah, it's just trying to determine how we got to the state of affairs with all these rules, regulations. Generally, um, uh, the left, people that want to force feed their castor oil down your throat, sorry, force feed their, their political agendas down your throat, they all flock to Washington. People that just want to be left alone, people that truly understand freedom, don't flock to government. They don't flock to Washington. And that is a simple way to, to kind of uh, describe why we're in the situation we're in today. You know, I've seen that my entire life. I remember when I was in college, we had 
student government that was funded by our activities fees. And it was a small clique of people. It was a black students union. It was the gay coalition that basically ran for office. Nobody else even paid any attention to this. They got themselves into office and then they used our student fees to pay for their personal goodies. They got caught, but of course nothing happened to them. It was a perfect example of what I've seen my entire life with real government. <laughs> they were training these people to be corrupt uh, kleptocrats and uh, that's exactly what they were. From that day on, I've seen that enacted at every level of government, from student government to the White House. Stay with us. We'll be right back with Matt McKinley, Texas Shrug. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and we're talking to the author of Texas Shrug, Matt McKinley. Now, the Declaration of Independence was a document of secession. It said that governments were created to protect our individual liberties, and when government becomes destructive of our individual liberties, we have not only the right, but the duty to alter or abolish that government. When we look at it, it looks like Washington is pretty resistant to any kind of alteration, isn't it? What do we do? Do we leave this country? Where, where do we go if we don't like the situation in America? Where can we go where there's a freer country? There isn't one. We're going to have to create one. The only way that we're going to leave is to leave politically. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, that can't be done. You know, just look at the, the number. How could we survive without the federal government subsidizing what we do? And as I point out earlier, the government, the federal government, is opening our borders to an invasion. This truly is an invasion. At what point does immigration become an invasion? When people are openly opposed to your form of government, when they come in in massive numbers, is that not an invasion? I think it is. I think what we have is not illegal immigration. We have illegal invasion that's being aided and abetted by a government that wants to erase our national borders, that wants to take our economy down. And when we look at it from an economic standpoint... What do we get from the federal government? We pay a lot of taxes, business, individual, and others, but when we lose the income from them, what would we lose? Would we lose uh, non-retirement benefits, the welfare program that they put on us as they bring these people in? Would we lose grants and contracts? Yes, we would lose some salaries and wages of federal employees. Some of those we would want to replace, some of those we wouldn't. But the bottom line is that we would be ahead by over a billion dollars per week, really about one and a half billion dollars per week Texas would be ahead if we stopped sending the money to Washington and stopped getting back what they give us. I think we could live with that. Before we go back to Arthur, uh, real quickly, talking about uh, Texas Shrugged, we have a special at InfoWars.com. If you sign up for our free InfoWars Underground Insider Newsletter that you'll get by email, if you do that at InfoWars.com forward slash newsletter, we'll send you a promo code. and You can get 50% off our two most popular T-shirts, Hillary for Prison and Come and Take It. Again, sign up for our free InfoWars Underground newsletter. That's a free newsletter. Let lets you know what's going on with unique uh, content as well as specials that you'll get from time to time. Also, we have a 20% sale that's been extended on Survival Shield X2. That's your, our nascent iodine. I keep an emergency supply of nascent iodine for my family. I recommend you do the same while you still can. You need to prepare for your family. And this is a great time to do it. You can get it for 20% off at InfoWarsLife.com. I don't know how much longer that's going to last, but that's our pure nascent iodine Survival Shield X2. Matt, uh, give us an idea of uh, what we can do at this point. I think it's very important to have a fictional story that lets us imagine freedom, that lets us imagine a peaceful transition of that, a scenario. I think that's a very healthy exercise of our imagination. What can we do? I mean, uh, yeah. look, the book is fiction. Okay, Texas, I, we don't need the feds knocking on my door here. The book is fiction. But uh, just what you and, you and Alex are doing, we need to wake people up. And my, my goal, my mission in life has become to wake people up. I'll give you an example. People have no idea that for most of our existence, we didn't, the federal government didn't collect any income tax. And then after Lincoln, uh, in the end of the 1800s, they put in 3% and people went up in arms. 3%, imagine that, 3%. And then they took it away because it was deemed unconstitutional. And then they got the right judges on the Supreme Court, the court they put it back in. And then Woodrow Wilson came in 
FDR, it jacked up to 92%, I believe. That's 90%. Right. That's right. So people don't know our history. If they knew the history, they would see that the ridiculous size and nature of the federal government is 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 completely unnecessary. Absolutely. Not only unnecessary. We're, we're out of time. Texas Shrugged.com, a great book. And, you know, of course, Bernie Sanders says, hey, we should have 90%. And then they enact Obamacare, call it a tax that didn't pass a constitutional amendment. Join us tonight and for Wars Nightly News.